YouTube, it's Brian Phillips, and I'm gonna get it up here for you. It's kind of huge. It's definitely long time coming. Oh, it's a dinky little box. You may have figured out from the video of flying this thing, but this is the Draco. It is the long anticipated Draco and extra long for us. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open it and just gawk at that beauty. <gasps> Look at that. That is so beautiful. It's the real one. So if you didn't know the history of this, you probably haven't been watching YouTube for the last couple of months <laughs> or years. Uh, Mike Patey was kind enough to work with Horizon Hobby to allow his plane to literally be laser scanned. And so with the fear of beating a dead horse, I'm gonna touch on a few of the topics that have been amply covered in the first few weeks of the release. This plane is awesome. You're gonna love it. You could stop the video and just order it right now if you want, <laughs> but I would recommend that you watch the rest of the video just to see how wonderful it really is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're almost opened up here. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. Some of you have been a little bit more patient than others with us on this. <laughs> wow, that looks good. That's cool. That is so huge. It's huge, and I know huge. This thing is two meters. That is two meters, okay? That's six feet wide. And this thing pales in comparison in real life to the carbon cubs of the world and the kit boxes. It's almost double the size. It's just gigantic in real life based on the Wiggla, which is a weird plane. And some people have suggested that it's ugly. Well, that's fine, that's one opinion to have. This plane's still awesome, even if you don't like the wiggle. So that being said, we're gonna open it right now and we're not gonna waste any time, which is something very unusual for our channel. Here goes nothing. By the way, thanks Mike Patey. This plane is awesome and you helped share it with the world and we all owe you a debt of gratitude and a few weeks. Go ahead, pull hard. Wait, hold on. We're, I'm trying to find a spot to pull. Okay, go. Go oh, for I it. can't. Can pull. you? Mm -mm. Oh, the camera crew can't do it. No. Oh, no. Don't worry. It's not the plane. It's just the packaging. I have an idea. I know. I know. I was thinking the same you thing. You kind of hurt my soul. I know. I'm just excited to get this plane I open and I want to open it. Well, I don't want to break a nail. I'm I don't normally break box. boxes, but I'm just really excited for this one. You know what we're going to do? Guys, if you've ever opened a Horizon box, sometimes they're a little bit hard to slide out. Okay, and I've done just a few of them. The Carbon Z Cub is similar in size, but it's not the same scale as this and it's not near the same level of detail or power or any of that stuff. Awesome plane, by the way. And if you're looking for a, hold on, I'm gonna go like this and push it to you. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh man, that thing is in there tight. Okay, I can get an edge. So just so you guys know, this is, this is not faked for the camera. This is legit in there tight. And it it's is. not a complaint. It is a reality that you will face. I did notice that Mike did not cover this part in his video. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is we will because you guys get the full picture. Look, I'm taking slowly. I'm ripping the box. I've never ripped up a box before. Are you pushing towards me? I'm not. I'm trying to get back here so I can be careful I don't damage anything. Okay, so look at this, guys. The edge of the package, there's one of these inner liners mm -hmm. on top and bottom. Mm -hmm. So it's very challenging to get your hands in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get in there and try to push. There we go, finally I got it going. So here we go. It's like a kid on Christmas day. Just throwing packaging everywhere. Oh, yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Ooh. So, Horizon Marketing Department, I apologize. <laughs> we want to see the plane. We want the real thing. Here it comes, guys. We're going to be careful which side we open this on. Ooh. 
Okay, yeah, because this thing is gorgeous. And I do not want to damage it on the unpackaging. That would be bad. All right, here we go. So we got three tape joints cut. All right, so I think we're safe. Oh man, look at this. Look at that. 1459 and a beautiful decal here. That is so gorgeous. Come on, man, it's not painted on the back. Ooh, that tape scares me. Please don't pull the paint off. Please don't pull the paint off. Ooh, lucky. That is gorgeous, guys. That is really gorgeous. Trying to simulate the gigantic variable pitch prop that's on the real one. These are, of course, not variable pitch. They're fixed pitch, but we can reverse our motor, and he, he couldn't on the real one. Of course, the, the real Draco was crashed. Uh, everybody walked away, but there was an accident. Crosswind took him. Look at that beautiful. That is the rear canopy, I believe, if that's what you would call it. Hmm. Please don't hate me for not knowing exactly what that thing's called. I know it's, it's basically a windscreen for the rear part. Oh man, look at the packaging, guys. We have protective coatings over nice. this. Magnets, awesome. Let's see how the magnets work. Oh yeah, that is amazing. Okay, cool. Guys, I usually don't go into the nut sacks too much, but uh, these are quite more than nut sacks. They're nuts, mm -hmm. bolts, and struts. That is phenomenal. Look at this. That thing has double-sided tape. I don't even know what it is, but it's gonna be great. I can already tell. And then look at this. Oh yeah, that is so gorgeous. That's the tail wow. dragger. And look at this, one of these. These are crazy. licensed products. Most of the things you're seeing that look to be scale details are real scale details. That is awesome. And by the way, look at this. Look at this. That is so smooth and it's got a lot of power to it. That is incredible. Plastic reinforced with steel on both sides. This is a complicated mechanism. This reminds me of when I was a kid and I had an RC-10T. It's got the king. This has got to be a gas strut in there. That is awesome. I, I don't know if there's fluid in there or if that's just pneumatic, but it sure feels like there's fluid in there because it dampens everything. Okay, wheel pant pieces it looks like and a couple more springs. We are gonna be careful to keep these in the bags. Uh, there are a lot of parts here. Oh yes, these are the counters, the counterweights that go on the ailerons. Look at the level of detail. And by the way, that is metal. That is not Wait, plastic. This is metal? That is metal. Oh, it is. That is amazing. That's super. So that's cool. That's crazy. Look at that detail. That is. Oh yeah, he was talking about also that. Also metal. Wow. The antennas are metal? Here, put that back on. Are they metal? They are freaking metal. Look, metal. Cool. That is so cool. These things go on the wingtips. That's what saved Mike Patey's life. So, or wait, hold on. No, that might be thing. an antenna. I'm not sure. These ones are the things that go on the wingtips. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I got that wrong. Sorry, the antennas did not save your life, Mike. We apologize. The little, it was like a wing dragger thing, there's, right? There's a lot, yes. Yeah, the wing dragger yeah. thing. Camera crew said it perfectly. So I'm gonna pause for a second and just talk about, um, I've never ripped up a box like that because we're a little bit excited about this one. We've had a few questions asking us about this and I have been just literally just biding time, being a good boy respecting wishes of people that we work with. Look at that Holy carbon cow. fiber. That is beautiful. Wow, That's that looks cool. almost holographic. It does. That is so cool. Look how thick it is. Wait. Oh my goodness. This thing has got to be, I, I, I'm, I mean, I have a death grip because I haul around 50s all the time. Yeah, Which are do. 50 pounds each. So. They are? They don't know what they are. <laughs> so I'm gonna untape these. These are the leading edge slats or the slats, if you will. Some people get upset with me for calling them leading edge slats. Well, they are leading edge slats. Just because it's redundant? It is somewhat redundant, but it's like a tip stall. There's no such thing as a tip stall, but there is a tip stall if you ask an RC model layer. Did you like how I call them model layers? Mm -hmm. That was really fancy. It's super fancy. Oh, wow. I feel official. This has got to be the most detailed 
I've seen Horizon do, oh man, look at all the panel lines. Guys, that is gorgeous. Just absolutely wonderful. Very, very cool. And yes, they do give this way, but this is gonna be mounted to the wing. They don't give this way. That direction matters. This direction doesn't. Okay, I thought there was a spar in there, but there's not. Looks like maybe at one point there was a design for that. Maybe a design change. So, beautiful, got the Horizon label there on the leading edge flat. And obviously we got two of those. And man, we have spent a long time on this unboxing already. I'm just realizing, is that a problem? Are we gonna get in trouble by the YouTube algorithm? Probably. I think that that's okay. <laughs> Too bad YouTube algorithm. We're gonna take one for the team on this one. Okay, so here we go guys. The other side looks identical, symmetrical, beautiful panel lines, a little bit of dimpling here on the foam. You're not gonna notice it on a silver member like this, but it is there, so just be aware of it. One thing you're gonna wanna watch out for is if you have these things sit out in the hot sun, you'll sometimes increase the dimpling, so you need to be careful about that, just to give you an idea. These are not the full length of the wing, to give you an idea of size, since you're not gonna see it in like two and a half minutes. You can see it's pretty substantial. Woo! Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful with those. Okay. Oh man, that's the elevator. That is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. This looks just like the elevator on the air tractor, except way, way, way cooler. Wow, that is gorgeous. Look at these. So well engineered. There's carbon fiber here, carbon fiber here, carbon fiber here, reinforcement here. Wow, that is just absolutely humongous. <gasps> there is a reverse leading edge slat. That is so cool. Oh wait, yeah, it definitely does. Does it go this way? I don't know which way it goes. I'm assuming that this is upright, but no, I'm not 100% certain. Because there's writing on the other side. Yeah, this is down, this is down. Yeah. But look at that, that's so cool. That's actually functional. So that must, I don't know why it's on the bottom like that, it's so weird. Okay. Mike Patey would know. We could ask Mike Patey. Mike Patey, if you're watching, first of all, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you sharing this plane with the world. And secondly, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I know you're just gonna stop by and watch all our videos in your free time. <laughs> if not, we'll just pretend you did. <laughs> okay, so there's the tires. Oh man, those tires look good. Ooh, they feel a little bit firm. Yeah, that's. Hopefully that's not a disappointment because we have all sorts of awesome stuff going on. Feel? Do you mind grabbing Oh, my wow. Yeah. It's, it's got some, some softness to it. Yeah. I think it needs a little, about half the material in there. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like we had a little bit of colorant. That was just dust. You can see it's on my fingertip. Oh. Okay. So watch this. Yeah, it's good. We're good. And then, by the way, that, that almost looks like CA that is aerosolized, and then it sometimes gets onto the plastic. Oh. So, all right. Hey, wait, you forgot the... What did I forget? Prop. Oh, Cover. shoot. No, oh, no. the spinner. The spinner. Okay, so the spinner doesn't look like anything too terribly special. Uh, looks pretty standard, pretty stock. And by the way, that's not a bad thing because what are you gonna break on a plane? The spinner. Well, I mean, you're gonna break the spinner and all sorts of other things if you do crazy stuff with it. But um, I mean, that's kind of what this plane does. By the way, two zip ties here. One, two. Mm -hmm. We may need to cut those, I'm not sure. I think this is the wing tip and it is sticking out here, but you can't get it out. Okay. Ooh. Trying to be careful about the way I do this. Remember, when you open this box, be careful which side's up because it's a huge box. Yeah. And I don't remember if I mentioned that, but isn't this box like 26 kilos? This, no, it's 10 kilos, okay? So the gross weight is 10 kilos. So that'd be about like 22, 22 and a half pounds. Yeah. 22.4 pounds. It's just, it's a big box. It's big, it's big. So if you're wondering if it's big, it is. And yes, by the way, if you're shipping this to Europe, I apologize. It's gonna be expensive, but uh, you know, you're gonna want it. So <laughs> you might as well start saving up. Uh, that being said, we're going to be flying this on the NX-8. It's been working out gloriously. Haven't had anything 
Weird happened. We've had just, I think we've had a couple of the like, same glitches we had on the NX6 so far. Um, oh, look at this. This is so gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. In the plastic, I can see the best tugs. Of course, Mike Patey's business. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Mike Patey uh, is involved in aviation and all sorts of other stuff. I mean, he's like the master of all things. It's crazy. It's like jack of, jack of all trades, master of none. He's like the master of all trades, jack of none. So it's, it's pretty cool. So foam to protect the foam. Horizon's good at that. Um, Best Tugs is one of the businesses that he does. They're, you're taped down yeah. here. And okay. there's like a little wood piece. Okay, so it's a wing, it's a wing support. These are the ones you got to be careful about because it's it's kind of irregular. We don't get a lot of that in our models typically, but so far so good. Um, this reminds me. Let's go into the time machine with Brian Phillips story time. <laughs> I used to work for a dealership years ago, oh. and I was detailing a Porsche Carrera S4 which is like a 911 for those of you that don't know Porsches. I don't know Porsches. Well, there were some Italian leather seats and they were wrapped tight like this, except the plastic was about 10 times thicker. And I used a sharp knife and I went like this to try to get it off because I couldn't rip it. And it went into the Italian leather and it separated the Italian leather. <laughs> Luckily, the salesman came back to let me know that the deal had fallen through and so I wasn't murdered. <laughs> And I lived to see They today. didn't fire you. They didn't fire me. No, they just fixed it. Yep. I told them about it. I didn't try to hide it. Man, mistakes happen. If you make a mistake at work and you try to hide it, you're getting fired. Wow. That is absolutely that is crazy. awesome and gorgeous. And not very heavy. Feel this. Oh Surprisingly my gosh. light. That's crazy. That is so cool. Look at this contour. It's just amazing. Plastic here. That is good because oh. that's gonna get screwed up otherwise. And look, we've got these beautiful, whatever they are, and of course Mike Petty could tell you exactly what that thing is and how that rivet took six hours to install. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. And I know a little bit about the plane, but not much. This is, I think that's where the black thing goes. Beautiful lights. Guys, this thing it's has many, many, many lights and you can change the modes by making an assignment for that channel. I'm super excited to get into the radio setup. By the way, look at this offset on this aileron. That is hard to, don't do that to your servos, guys. I'm doing this, I'm taking one for the team. Look where it pivots. It's not at the end of the control surface. That's so weird. Do you know why that is? No. I believe he did a full length flapper on on this plane. Look at this. Look. Is that how it goes together? Uh, yeah, almost certainly. Cool. Man, there's three lights that I face know. downward. And look. What's that? Serviceability, guys. It's a miracle. We can actually take the servos out and work on them. Horizon, you must have been listening. Who are we kidding? Horizon listens. They just say no like a good parent. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? That thing is locked in there, and I'm not 100% sure exactly what you're supposed to do to take that out. Maybe oh, these it. come out. Oh, okay. They come completely out. They don't just twist. Okay, once those are out, then you're allowed to take this out. Wow. You know what this would be great for? <laughs> she was rolling her eyes. <laughs> hey, let's take this minute to show you some kitties. This is Colby. She's not a kitty. She's three, a mom. Three kitties in here. Are they in there? Yes, oh, there's them. three. I'm gonna turn the flash on to annoy them. They're so dang cute. There's one. So we are shamelessly like advertising for this Where? beautiful plane with beautiful kittens. Where's the other one? Oh, oh hopefully it didn't fall no, down it's under to here. its certain death. No. That'd be horrible. Think of all the mice that will be eating my planes. Oh, they're so Let's cute. See. This guy we call the fat face because he's got a poofy face mm -hmm. and they're so dang cute and they look so just cute. like mom and dad. And then there's the skinny face gray one, which is this guy back here. And then this is the one that looks like mom, but they're all boys. This litter is all boys. So getting back to the airplane, <laughs> I told Megan we would just poke that in whenever we had well, an opportunity. The, 
girls brought them out to play with them earlier, and then they all fell asleep in their nose. We also have five more kittens. <laughs> it's crazy. And, and three cats. And three cats. Three cats that bringeth how many? Eight kittens. Yeah. So, like I've mentioned, Bob Barker was definitely onto something. <laughs> okay, so continuing onward, I mean, no disrespect to Mike Patey by not mentioning all of the amazing details that are on this because there are so many, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, so, I don't want you guys to think I'm trying to leave something out because there's so much going on. I can't quite pull I that out. That I out. have to separate this first. Okay. okay. Look at this, guys. Look at the that attention is... to detail on packaging. You know, like, okay, so just pause for a second. When we talk about packaging, you're thinking to yourself, Brian, I get it, it's good packaging. No, you don't get it. Look at this, it's so stiff, it actually protects the plane. That's why I had to literally destroy the box to get the plane out. That's much better than FedEx or UPS or DHL destroying your plane so that the box comes in one piece. There's a, there's a cat, there's over, a cat there. over there. <laughs> Sorry, cat. You didn't hit her. Okay, so this is the other wing. Man, just gorgeous. Really, really, really outdone themselves on this Horizon has. Look at this. So cool. So cool. The decals look really nice. Mm -hmm. um, the clear shows through a little bit, but boy, I, you can't even see like there's, there's a mold. There's a mold release, which is not called a mold release. We had somebody finally correct us on that. It's called a mold, uh, I, I don't know what the guy called it. But it's where they, I mean, it's still, it's like the same purpose, right? There's where your control surface goes in. Oh, cool. Yeah, that is just so gorgeous. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this upside down. We're gonna do this one more time, just so you guys, if you weren't paying attention, you can see how to do this. So those wood pieces are just for shipping support, yeah, right? They're just shipping. But yeah. you know what you could make out of this? Thank Something you. awesome. Just saying. He'll go get those later, don't worry. Well, there's no cat over there, never mind. <laughs> I think we're okay. She left. So I'm excited for this plane. You may have noticed I've been um, answering questions repeatedly. The same question. When's the Draco? When's the Draco? When's the Draco? When's the Draco? Now. I mean, it's, it's now. The answer. This is the answer. It's now. Look at this, guys. We have two different styles of foam. I want to know the guy at Horizon who's responsible for adding the softer foam on top of the other foam because he did a really good job. Whew, the manual. It's not folded. Oh, yay. Yes. Throw that away. You're supposed to download it. Don't even read that thing. If you're getting an early release, like the first batch, they're screwed up. Yep. Okay. I reluctantly threw it on the ground. I made sure there was no kittens <laughs> after I threw it. Okay, here we go. I don't know how to get the landing gear out. They're zip tied down, so you're gonna need side cutters. Oh, okay. Whoa, look at this. And also, if you guys are aviation enthusiasts and you're thinking of buying this so that you can fly it and then crash and then buy a new one, Follow the links in the description below. <laughs> you will love doing that process. If you want to start and actually learn to fly, P.S. If you know how to fly real planes, you may or may not know how to fly radio controlled. I'm just being very gracious here. You don't. You'll have to learn how to do them both. They are different skills. And I know it seems like how hard can it be? I know how to fly a real plane. Ask another pilot. Don't listen to me. I'm not a full scale pilot. I just want you to understand that flying a real plane is so very different than flying a radio controlled airplane. But with Safe Select, you could probably fly it if you have a big enough area. This is a very powerful plane. You could hurt yourself on it. You need to be careful, okay? That's a big prop. It's spinning very mm -hmm. fast, reverse thrust. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. I mean, almost like a real plane, except very small. Wait, it is a real plane. <laughs> so anyway, getting back to the point, if you're thinking of buying this and you're a real full-scale pilot, I want you guys to be aware. It's, this is, this is a, you know, you could fly it as a beginner, but it's a very detailed plane and it's quite expensive too. So, I mean, but if you're flying full scale, then this is like free, it's like, you know, one trip. <laughs> so, you know, the $100 sandwich or the $100 hot dog or whatever it is that uh, pilots like to do because they have to go fly somewhere. Now, I can't get to the zip tie on this one. Do you need to tip it up? No, I don't want the fuse to pop out. 
Oh, okay. So I meant to do this last, guys, and I think I can do this now, but ooh, you know what? Ooh. I have to because you can't get past this landing yeah. gear. I want to go over the landing gear a lot. Um, yeah, camera crew, we're just going to do it this way. Okay. So anyway, to complete my train of thought, if you're wanting to buy this because you're just like, I can't live without it because I want it as a model for my desk, go for it. Um, we'll show you how to put it together in this video. And as you get ready to legitimately get out and fly a plane like this, we will walk you through the process. We're not here for just one video. We're not here for this one plane. We've been reviewing these things for a few years now, and boy, that is beautiful. Probably the most beautiful landing gear I've ever seen on a radio-controlled airplane. This is a bind and fly, folks. This is not an ARF. This is not a balsa built up model. This is a legit bind and fly, which means you open the box and this is the way it comes. That is awesome. That is amazing. And you know what else that does? This is carbon fiber all the way down and it tapers down. Look at this. This is something Mike was talking about. He was very impressed. This is carbon fiber? That's carbon. Yeah, down? I wouldn't rub it. Hmm. Carbon fiber can come off and get in your fingers kind of like fiberglass insulation and it hurts. So don't, I mean, that's why you don't lick it. Oh, I well, know. that's my next. I know, I know. You're going to be disappointed. So that being said, if it's encapsulated in epoxy or, you know, resin or something of the sort, that is amazing. That's so what I was getting cool. at, and I sometimes get distracted. I always come full circle most of the time. <laughs> this will keep the landing gear toe in or out. And, you know, you always got to watch out for the toe. If you toe the wrong way, then you're going to crash because you're going to tip as soon as you hit. Um, so you want those landing gear tracking straight and those two cylinders are going to help do that. They're going to help accomplish it. There's a little bit of give on this, but it's very minimal. Okay. So that is absolutely gorgeous and absolutely just amazing that we have that much detail in there. And for the record, part of the reason that you would pick a horizon model over say like this XPR, um, Boeing 737 max nine, which by the way is absolutely gorgeous, but it flies maybe a little bit less than gorgeous. And the landing gear took a lot of work, partly because of a crash and partly because it was a bad design. Mm -hmm. That is part of the reason why you go with a plane like Horizon is put together here. And by the way, this landing gear, I mean, the engineering that went into this probably was more than went into this entire plane. Yeah. Just, I mean, and that's no BS. Anybody who knows how to put this stuff together understands what I'm talking about. That is incredible amount of uh, craftsmanship that goes into something like this. That's not to take anything away from XPR, by the way. This is just a revolutionary design. It's very extremely detailed, and I haven't even gotten the fuse out, which I'm about to do right now. Oh, yes. All right, I am not gonna drop this on the ground because the foam's stuck. Can we oh. pause? Okay, so. I'm setting this down on the chair just to give me somewhere to pull this off because it's slick. So be careful. Oh yeah, that is yeah. amazing. Oh, look at that controller board. That looks complicated. Wow, that is a breakout board. Okay. And it goes to the AR637TA. Now the TA is going to give you the full suite of telemetry where available, and this does have the Avian ESC as I understand it. So that means you'll be able to get your full smart pack, individual cell telemetry. You're getting pretty much everything that you can get right now, except for Vario, which to be honest, you don't really need a Vario in this thing. No. Um, a, Vario, a Vario, oh man, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, there was something in there. Could you grab that camera crew? Oh my goodness. This is so beautiful. Wow. That's crazy. That is so cool. Wow, I am so excited. Look at the exhaust tubes. Yeah. That is so cool. Look at the thrust angle on that thing. It's down and right like crazy. Probably because the huge prop, do you see that? So if you get this thing and you're looking at the tip, okay, and you're like, why does it point down and away to the right? First of all, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Second of all, every plane, the more insane the P factor is, which is going to want to tip your plane over and suck it over to the ground, um, 
th that's what you're going to have to counter that. Okay. It's a good thing. Wow. Look at that oil cooler install. That is so cool. Look at this. That's an inlet there. The Do you see the Avian ESC right here? You know what we call that? Serviceability. Oh. Look at the fairing here. Guys, we just don't get stuff like this. Look at all the... I don't usually go into this much detail on a plane, but guys, knowing how much effort was put into this... Where is that? It's... Where is that thing? I what don't know that? what this is. It's got a, it's got magnets on the back. Looks like it goes a hatch of some Oh, sort. it goes on top of there. That thing's supposed to be stuffed down in there. Oh. Okay, so okay. we're gonna lay this down. Nothing's broke. No, it just came out. Okay, so you can lay it down without a plane stand, but we're gonna get a plane stand. In fact, at this point, let's just verify we're empty. We have everything out of the box. It's a pretty big box. Yeah. Very stout box, very strong. Some of the things that you guys are considering when you decide to buy a big expensive plane like this, maybe, hey, do I want to ship that thing? Am I comfortable getting it here in one piece? I can tell you this, we're in the country, our packages get touched by a lot of different package handlers. <laughs> and uh, by the time we get them, and we had a minuscule amount of scrape on the, just the top center part of the, of the box. Mm. Oh, that's just oh, a zip, zip tie. tie. I wanted to make sure it wasn't an important piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause, we'll get the plane stand set up and we'll get the packaging out of the way and come right back. All right, guys, so we're back with the Draco. This thing is just really amazing. We have been cleaning up the mess from ripping up the box and the unboxing. And just as we've been walking by a million times, just looking at new detail after new detail that we've noticed, this plane is just gorgeous. One thing I didn't mention in the unbox is these hinges on the rudder. This is a big, well-reinforced, beautiful rudder. And there are one, two, three hinges that are embedded in the foam. It's not just a pinch hinge. So that's very good. And then also, if we can show them this, there's serviceability here, okay? Serviceability, you can get to the servos, okay? Getting to servos, it seems like such a minor detail, but it's really not minor when you have a servo that fails. If you're going to be rough and tumble with this plane, you want to be able to fix stuff. So that being said, we have just been noticing item after item after item of just really high quality. So just to give you an idea, look how humongous this motor is. Oh my goodness. This is a 400 kV brushless outrunner, obviously. And it is an EFLM 5065D, which means it's 50 by 65 millimeters. That is huge. So very excited to see how this thing runs and it feels smooth, which you normally don't have that on such a powerful motor. And then also this is where the battery goes, okay? So the battery is in here. There's one lead that goes all the way up front for an LED. I'm a little bit concerned about that because it looks like it, you know, at one point maybe it was designed to be underneath the tray, but the ESC is under there. So maybe they decided against that at one point or another. The tray does not come out. So you're going to have to stuff your battery in here. I'm not looking forward to that step. It does have an IC5 installed because this is an Avian receiver. It is a smart receiver. I would be super careful about your wire leads just because of where they're located. Don't get into the habit of having those moved every time you fly this plane. So take a few seconds if you can and get these leads to tuck down underneath your battery tray. This is time well spent. It's going to be, it's going to pay dividends at some point because you don't need those things flopping around every time you're getting your battery in and out. Camera crew, can you hear me the scissors? I'm just going to, for safety's sake, so I'm not distracted and accidentally cut my fingers off. I'm just going to take the safety label off for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that's step, step zero. <laughs> do not, do not try that at home. So we printed off our manual as prescribed by horizon. The manual had a lot of different things that weren't quite right. So if you get an early delivery, then you're gonna to wanna to print the manual. Okay, so we printed actually two, just mm -hmm. because that's easier for us when we're filming. And our first step is we are going to get ready to set up. And by the way, we are gonna go through the full radio setup as we always do. 
Uh, we are not gonna do it as a bind and fly import. We don't ever do that. It's not that we don't know how to do it. It's very easy to do from what I understand. I wanna teach you guys how to do this. I don't want you to just know how to make it work, okay? Because that's not what our channel is all about. There's plenty of other people that do that stuff on YouTube. Our thing is teaching you how to fly. So if you're a full scale pilot and you're buying this as a stationary display to sit in your office, never intend to fly it, then you can just skip over that part. But this thing is gonna be a gorgeous flying plane. So it is not just a display piece, okay? This is a true to scale flying plane and it will do stole performance. By the way, these are screwed in, speaking of serviceability. So if you bust one of these off, you can take them out. Now, I don't know how they order. I'm not sure what pieces you have to get for that, but you can undo one Phillips screw and they come out. That's very cool. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna start the build right now. We'll work through it, and as soon as we're done with the build, we'll jump into talking about batteries, which just a quick 10,000 foot view, pun intended. We can use just about any battery in this plane. I think they recommend we start with 5,000 milliamp, 6S, 30C, this is a Gen 2 LiPo. They can, I believe you can go as high as 7,000, and I believe you can go as small as 4S, 5,000. That's crazy. Now, I would never fly this thing on 4S just because I want the power. Mm -hmm. Power saves lives. Just ask Mike Patey about that. So anyway, all right, so we've got the prop. We're not gonna start with that. We're gonna try to follow the instructions because this is kind of a complicated build in that you don't wanna put things on the plane in the wrong order uh, just because the tail wheel kind of makes me a little bit nervous at this point. It's very, uh, interesting assembly. It looks easy, but I just want to make sure I do it in order. Yep. So with that being said, camera crew, what's our first step? So we're going to do the landing gear installation actually first. So there should be washers. So step one is to put the wheels on. Yeah. What size nut are we going to use? Well, it's a five millimeter lock nut is okay. what the directions say. So when I use this five millimeter nut driver, it should go right on there and turn it, right? It, it should, but except it doesn't. Yeah. I think it's actually a 5.5 millimeter. It's a very weird size. Most people don't have. I tried st I, I tried metric and standard. I believe it's like 964. Um, it might be 930 seconds. And I mm. apologize if I'm saying it wrong. So we're just going to use a crescent wrench. It's one nut. It's not that big a deal. It's not like, you know. Technically two. One on side. Well. But yeah. I mean, yeah. And the on ours, the washers and everything were installed. So when yeah. you're looking at the picture here, that's already on it yep. it's just showing you how it's assembled so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be like way careful with this because i don't want to ding it up so what i'm going to do is it's super easy you just spin this it doesn't spin the shaft so it's no problem it looks like this standoff receives a thread all and so when you undo this it's quite simple okay there's two washers the big washer goes back and then the second big washer also goes there correct so two inside and yep. then one outside Yep. Now, these wheels are symmetrical from everything I can tell. I wiped them down and the little teeny bit of whatever white, mm -hmm. you know, just whatever molding stuff it was, it's come right off. We just wiped it down with a wet rag. So we're just gonna slide this on here. If you're concerned about freedom of spinning, don't be, but if you are, you can use white lithium grease on this, on this shaft, okay? If you wanna lube your shaft, lube it that way. But look how smooth that, that wow. turns, okay? That's pretty good for plastic. I mean, plastic on metal, that's, that's not bad. I can definitely live with that. Now, this is probably going to be one of the areas that wears and tears poorly on this plane, just based on the overall performance of the plane. Um, my expectation is if you were looking for a place to upgrade, um, softer tires is usually a, a good place to start with, so. I don't know why you would need to upgrade this plane. And I'm not saying you need to, but I'm just saying if you're looking for something to upgrade, because some of you guys just can't not upgrade a plane, which is fine. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten this. This is a nylock, so it's a lock nut, so you don't have any, um, you don't have anything else, really. There's no lock nut or anything. And see, even with that torque down pretty tight, and I don't wanna break the shaft off, so I'm being very gentle. Um, I mean, I could you break it in half easily, so be careful, especially with this much mechanical advantage. Okay, so same thing over here. We're just going to slide. You'll notice that my nuts and washers are trapped here. So 
once I loosen this and all that stuff's gonna go free, and that's okay, it's all part of the show. Okay. This is this is not a hard build, guys. I just I wanna make sure to reaffirm that. And by the way, I've been talking to the real pilots for whatever reason today. And I don't ever do that. I don't oh, really? ever address full scale pilots. But I just feel like this plane is so cool within the full scale aviation um, echelon that people that are in full scale aviation are gonna be like, I wanna get that plane. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's expensive. It's just so cool, I can't pass it up. Yeah. And plus now that the Draco has moved on to heaven, um, we are gonna have a lot of people that want it just because they want it because it's, you know, it's a one of a kind plane and it's gone. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, if Horizon does any other planes with Mike Patey, then that, I'm sure that'll be well received as well, but that doesn't take away from this, okay? So that being said, if you guys are new full scale pilots and you're thinking about getting into this to fly, we go over all sorts of stuff to help teach you, to get you the utilities you need to actually be able to have success. We are not into, teaching one and done RC pilots. We want you guys to be around for the long haul. Now, the other thing too is we realize most full scale pilots or a lot of full scale pilots started in RC aviation because it's just what you do if you're into planes. If you're a kid and you didn't run around with your arms stuck out and fly, you know, then I don't know who you are. So. I, not me? Not, do I not count? No, you don't count. <laughs> you did that. I'm gonna petition your parents for pictures. <laughs> Even girls do this stuff. Come on now. Come on, man. So you see this? That is one that beautiful is set of landing gear. It is. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Look, it's just the way everything goes together. It's just amazing. And we've seen a lot of pretty planes, guys. Yeah. Okay, so that being said, that's assembled. Now we need to go ahead and mount it to the plane. Yep. This should be quite easy. Now we did we did have a cover that was off on our plane. Yours is probably gonna be on there, I'm guessing. There's a pass-through here. This goes in here, in case you're wondering. There is a bind plug and a bind button. So if you prefer to have the bind plug up here, you can stick this in just like this, and you can leave this out for easy recovery. Now, the other thing is, I just wanted to point this out because you're thinking to yourself, but I don't want a bunch of tools. Yeah, I mean. Oh, that is amazing. That is so pretty. I know that was so not cool. supposed to be done right now, I but totally I could not resist. Look at this. It's just amazing. I couldn't believe you resisted that one. Another light. Yep. We need some more lights on this. Oh, kind of like. By the way, little... the instrument cluster is lit. And we didn't, I didn't even like show that earlier, but I was looking at it when we were getting stuff ready. I love the joysticks. It's so cool. So cool. Very, very cool. Okay, so getting back to mounting, I don't mean to take anything away from you, camera crew, but I'm gonna flip this over. Okay. Now, I, I was actually kind of nervous to put this on my plane stand because while this is strong foam, you do need to be a little bit careful because look at these details. These mm -hmm. panel lines are something we haven't seen. Look, service ability. That's amazing. You can actually fix stuff. So you know, I mean, I wish that all the, RC companies were listening to us about stuff like this because serviceability makes the plane worth fixing when mm -hmm. you have a crash, okay? Now, I'm probably still gonna fix it with hot glue, but that's okay. <laughs> you get to it at least. All right, so let's just see how horrible this fits together. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that's so perfect. Okay, so it's on there. Um, now we need to get some hardware to mount it. The camera crew has so kindly laid this out for us. We're, we're trying to turn a new leaf for this video. We are? No, <laughs> we're not. We're trying, to, we're trying to keep this video under six hours. Yeah. We're probably gonna fail. Yeah. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of trouble finding the hole. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't I want the people to not trust me. It's the right screw. It is the right screw. You're sure? Okay, so Wait. we're gonna try this. I, these no, are too small. Those are absolutely not yeah. it. Yeah, that's so the only, this is definitely that's the only it. choice. So it looks like a number two Phillips is what you're gonna need to um, get proper penetration here. I'm so. 
we're just going to slide them in here. Uh, okay, so it's going fine. It almost seems like there should be washers here. Nope. Okay. Yeah, according to the directions. Okay, I'm just using this cheap China screwdriver, but you could use an actual proper screwdriver if you wanted, like a Craftsman screwdriver. That's <laughs> I got it for you. Well, no, I'm just saying, because some people have different um, tools yeah. at the field. That is not spinning into anything that I can tell. Oh, yes, yes it is. It is. Yep. That is so weird. There must be a nut zert in there. Mm, it Do you know just, what a nut zert is? Yeah, it's a re it receives the screw. It's a nut that has like teeth on it, mm. or sometimes it's got ribs on the side and they take and penetrate the nut into the receiving material. And then when you put the screw through, then it goes and holds onto it and pulls the two materials together. It's, you know, people use them all the time. People call them blind nuts. I think you just like saying nut zert. Listen, <laughs> nut zerts are, that is a completely ambiguous thing, nut zerts, to some people. And, but here's the interesting part is as I turn this, I don't really feel like there's any purchase until you get about three or four turns in. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this, you're gonna feel like, uh-oh, one of the nuts are fell out. Right. No, it didn't. Just keep going. Just keep, just keep turning. Wow, feel how tight that is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so <laughs> we're, we're bonding this landing gear that is really beautiful to a really beautiful fuselage. And it's just kind of like, the more I look at it, the more I think, boy, I really hope I don't screw this up because it's just absolutely gorgeous. I hope this isn't one of those planes that I'm like too scared to fly because it's just amazing looking. It's super cool. Okay. So we have the little bottom piece. Now this piece does glue on it, or not glue, it's got uh, double, double side tape. tape. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. This stays open? That doesn't seem right. Hold on. Yeah, it does. So they actually have quite the exit strategy for the heat coming from the ESC. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can actually stick that down and still service everything. So what we're going to do is we'll do just that. Double-sided tape here. Camera crew is going to take that from me. Okay. And then basically if you need to get in here, when you do this, You'll just undo the screws as you did before and this whole thing comes off. I'm kind of surprised they didn't have that on there. Maybe it was, yeah. maybe it was something they added later. Okay, so we have a spot here that needs to receive an antenna of sorts, so I believe, the bent antenna. I don't think antennas are on until later, like in terms of the instructions. Oh, we need the, yeah, we need the tailwheel first. Yes. That's right. Which is the next step. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the tailwheel next which Move. is kind of funny because I'm a little bit nervous about this. Well, it's kind of, the directions are, remove the two screws to remove the two small plastic covers, A, left and right side. Install the tail wheel assembly, B, with two 20 millimeter screws and nylon lock nuts. Okay. Do not over tighten. I already figured out what to do. Okay. Look, so there's a nut, which may actually be five millimeters, incidentally. Mm. So I'm gonna grab my nut driver and I'm gonna grab the crescent wrench just depending on what I need. So it looks like this is actually a five millimeter. Yep, that one is five millimeter. So like I said, that's 5.5 .5 millimeter up front. Um, that's kind of a weird size and the only reason I know is because I use them for work and they're involved in the computer boards. Mm. There's some weird sizes that you have. Okay, so this is loosening up. Now, don't drop your nuts on the floor, especially into your cat food. I'm gonna go over the counter. Okay. Sorry. I trust you, but not that way. <laughs> Thanks. See this? Okay. So out comes the hardware. Single nylock. Very small nylock, no less. Now remember, this obviously is gonna go this way. Okay, just like that. So then this one pin goes through, but you need to get this mounted too. So you may find that it's easier to do this one first. Mm. So that's what I'm going to do. If you want to just help me remember where that is, because it's going to blend into the counter yes, like crazy. I see it. So now YouTube, if you're just new to our channel, 
we do this for many, many, many different planes. We don't just do it for the big, amazing new releases like this, but this plane is pretty upper echelon for us, I would say. It's pretty awesome. It's very cool, very cool. And we're honored to be involved with this project. In fact, we've really, <clears throat> working with Horizon has been really good. It's a good company to work with. We worked with Horizon before they worked with us. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, if that tells you anything, we think that they're a company that's worth doing business with, and they have been around for a long time. They're obviously very big in the hobby, um, in the community. They're big on supporting the hobby, local hobby shops and things like this, and uh, they help to support people like us too, which is nice. So. The way they do that is when you guys buy from the links, then you help to support us a little bit financially. And that makes it so that my wife doesn't uh, take me out in my sleep. So mm -hmm. if you could just buy a few more things <laughs> and get me a few more days on this planet, it would be much appreciated. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I knew there was a reason you were keeping me around. <laughs> yep. So this here is gonna go like that and line up. That is just awesome. That's cool. I really hope I'm doing this right because I have not referred to the manual on this. Does it look right to you? Well, you made it through one step following the directions. Yeah, that's usually about right. Yeah. I mean, it looks right, but. <clears throat> I mean, it's no dynam. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, so the five millimeter nut is in there now. Can you imagine if they tried to pull something like this off? Um. No, I think actually we, I can. I think we might say no. I can't imagine. And just say no, kids. It might mean No me. drugs, no alcohol, just say no. That's your, your D.A.R.E. advertisement, That's PSA. D.A.R.E.? Well, I mean, proved it was, how old we are. It was a thing. It was a thing back when we were, we're kind of old fogies, so. So how do you connect the steerable? Burp, burp. Right here, yep. This actually has different control points. And so let's look at the manual. It's these springs here, camera crew, right here. Oh, so those springs mm -hmm. and these and the screws were all in the same bag, if that matters. Um, well, I don't know. I just hope this is better instructions than what we got with the, what was that plane? The air tractor. The air it? tractor. Yeah because of the instructions were a little bit lacking on that tail fixture. Okay, so I believe this is correct. And then when we're done, we have to put that cowl over it. I think it's a wheel pant. That's what it looks like. Yeah. This is gonna be a little bit tricky. I think it would have been wiser to actually put it over here first, but this will be fine. You know what? I'm just gonna be patient and get a pair of needle nose pliers and the needle nose pliers will help me to make that stretch so that I can reach. Oh. You know this is a serious plane when I take the time to get my needle nose pliers from the kitchen drawer. So everybody keeps their needle nose pliers. Listen, I keep my needle nose pliers in more than just the kitchen drawer. I am well aware. Yeah, jeez, that is awesome. Man, that is just so cool. Okay, cool, so now the next thing we need to do is, here, maybe give them a shot with like the white backdrop so they can see it better. There's two screws and it looks to me like this goes over here, but I'm not sure exactly how to do this. Oh, good, it goes like this. Oh, that is just phenomenal. That is just phenomenal. I need to trade you spots, okay. camera crew. I'm laying the screws down, if you can help me remember yep. where they are. I see them. Okay, so this is gonna go either here or there, and I honestly, I'm not sure which way they go. The instruction manual says it, but I just haven't looked at it. It basically just says left and right. Oh, there you oh, go. Like that. Perfect. There you go. That is amazing. Cool. I'm still trying to figure out why those weren't. Oh, because you have to get to that lot, that bottom screw. But the instructions make it sound like you have to take that off first. Oh, well, again, it's I one think, of those things. Horizon then... models sometimes have steps that are not necessary, and sometimes they neglect a few steps that are necessary. Even though they're better than the average bear, there's still a little bit of that that happens. To be honest with you, the complexity of this model is just almost overwhelming. Like there is so much going on on this thing. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. 
Just imagine if you had like crazy retracts involved too. Oh my goodness. This thing, the landing gear on it are like nicer than most planes we have. Super easy. I was worried about that and that, like I didn't need the instructions at all. So that was all the springs and those, that little cover assembly was all in the same bag for us. Okay. So now as you can see, oh, that is just awesome. Gotta love it. Okay, so next step. Okay. Probably the tail, I'm yep. guessing. Horizontal stabilizer. Horizontal stabilizer. By the way, guys, folks, look at this. Mm -hmm. Brass balls. Okay. Do not, do not raise by stabilizer. Okay. Oh yeah, embedded foam hinges here. This is an opaque finish, so you're not gonna be able to see if I hold this up to the light, but I guarantee you there's some carbon fiber in there. Yep, here you can see here, one, two, three, four pieces at least, and there might be more that I can't see. All right, so to put this on, there's actually a release here. So I believe you just slip it in. I just gotta make sure I find the right hole. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Seriously? That was wow. awesome. And by the way, I just want to point something out. First of all, look how huge that thing is compared to the fuse. This is only like 53 inches long mm -hmm. and it's 77 inches wide. So if it's as easy as I think to put the wing in, this thing will transport reasonably well. It is still big. It's tall. And we'll show you what we mean when you put it on its mains. You may need to put it in the car or truck on your plane stand so that you can get it around easily. Ball joint. Let's talk balls, joints. That's an unfortunate place to have a ball joint on that side because once you snap this on, it's gonna be a bear cat to get out. So I think what we're gonna do is we're going to very carefully make the decision to wait to hook that up, okay? Because once you have this hooked up and you get the AR637TA started, it's gonna initiate and put this in the correct position and we wanna have all that done prior to actually landing that because it's gonna be challenging to get a screwdriver in there. Actually, you know, you may be able to get a screwdriver. Yeah, you're gonna to have to take off both sides of this, mm -hmm. lift up the wheel and then get at it from the side. You could also take the nut off. You could take the nut off and then roll it out that way too. So a couple different options. In the meantime, this is supposed to land here and I'm still not 100% sold on doing that, but I'm gonna do it because the instructions recommend doing this step. I just don't want to forget that. That would be uh, somewhat devastating. Uh, we haven't forgotten an elevator yet. Is that a ball joint? <gasps> Are you kidding me? That's a ball joint. You don't it? even need to loosen it. You just stick it on there. Hmm. Oh man, I hope I can get that to tighten now. Okay, mistake number one. That is most definitely a ball joint. And yes, there is a nylon or plastic rather thing under there that holds the nut. It is very difficult to tell if it's holding it tight or not. I'm gonna have to get a flat bladed screwdriver and come right back. So I have a flat bladed screwdriver. I'm just gonna try to reach in there real quick. This is one of those self-inflicted wounds I was trying to avoid on this plane. You know what? It's not tightening, but I don't think it's gonna matter. This thing isn't a control surface right here. This is just a strut. So it should be, should be totally fine, okay? There you go. So if you transport this to the field and you disassemble it, point of wear and tear to keep an eye on would be that connection point, mm -hmm. okay? So if you're concerned, Undo the screws here. This is a huge horizontal stabilizer. You need to be aware of that, okay? I'm not saying that's a problem for everybody, but some people are gonna have smaller cars and things like that. You're gonna probably wanna take that off. Okay, so antennas next? Um, what is next? They probably jump straight into that stuff, but this let's- This aileron counterbalance and wingtip guard um, and handle. Yeah, they're talking about doing that stuff at the end, but we can do it now while it's upside down. Okay. Why don't we just do it now? It's not gonna change anything, it's just antennas. Okay. okay, so the bent antennas right there, camera crew, all three of them, please. Um, 
These are metallic mm -hmm. antennas, which is really cool, antennae. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this on. If you guys look down at the manual, it says where to put them. There's also these steps. That's actually a handle, right? Yeah. How does this go in? Does it glue? Apply CA. Yep. They want you to use CA. I'm probably gonna go ahead and use um, uh, foam to foam or mucilage. So let's talk about the different glues quick. CA is uh, cyanoacrylate, I believe is what that's called. And you could use a little bit of kicker. I'm not sure if you would have to use foam safe on this. I generally err on the safe side. I like the way that this stuff works better. It's not like rocket science here. We're not talking about building an entire model off plan, but I'm gonna go ahead and use um, probably foam to foam. The reason I'm using this is because you can get this at Horizon. So if you order your plane, you can order this too. And it's reasonably inexpensive. It's not, it's not as cheap as mucilage and mucilage works really good. But the thing is this stuff, you can order it when you're ordering that plane. Cause by the time you pay shipping on this from a competitive brand, you're gonna end up being, you know, probably about the same price. And this is, this is plenty good. It takes a little longer to set up though. So just be aware. Um, this obviously it's dark, so we're not gonna go out and fly in the dark. Um, Whoa, boy, very excited. Whoa. Hey, careful. You're running into that mm -hmm. there, camera crew. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, for my... Oh my goodness. Okay, I guess I'm gonna use my finger. So, that tube was just like really excited to see me. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was excited to see the plane. Yeah, I think it was excited to see the plane. I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. So this stuff is a contact adhesive. So the way it works is you want to go ahead and apply it to both sides of the surface. So I'm just going to stick this in there. And then ideally you would just kind of, you know, smear it around, just give it a good smear. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just set it aside for a few minutes. Okay. Hey, camera crew, mm -hmm. any chance you can give me a paper towel before mm -hmm. this just smears all over the place? Cause it's a little excited right now about something. <laughs> and I would not recommend getting that on your fingers, even though it'll come right off. Um, it just rubs off of your fingers. So it's not, not the end of the world. It's not like CA, CA you don't want to get on your fingers cause it's, you have to use acetone to get that off. So you get your wife's fingernail polish remover and that will take it off. Um, okay. Where's the, the top ones go the other direction. So I think we're going to leave those off for now. Okay. Until we flip the plane over. And then there's one other, two more steps. If you can grab the steps for me, these. camera crew. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's two steps. Let's just dry fit these real quick. Oh, those screw in. Those screw in. Oh. Where's the screws? Probably these, because there's two of them that are the same. Yeah, they screw in. Mm. That's awesome. That's Wait. really, really good. Hold on, I have two different sizes. That looks so good. Oh my goodness. That's, that's gonna be cool. That's cool. Oh, oh, big boy. and little. Well, I don't know. Honestly, I'm not sure. Did you, what do you think the direction's called for? Uh, it's calling for a three by eight. That'd so, be the little ones. Cause we need. Why do you think that? Uh, there was another step that needed like a. Let's measure them quick. Do we have some calipers? Oh, wow. Look at that. We have we some do. calipers. Oh, thanks, Danny. One of our subscribers got these for us and we had previously been using the world's crappiest calipers. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Danny. That's 10 millimeters long. So camera crew as usual is correct. Those are our eight millimeters by three. See, that's four. The shaft is what we're measuring. And you have to kind of, when you measure the shaft, you have to kind of go on the threads there. Yeah, so that's three. So in this case, we are gonna use the smaller of the two. Just give them one more shot of that. Bigger, smaller, okay? Smaller, bigger, okay? These ones are going to secure the steps on. Chinese screwdriver, nothing fancy. Okay, oh yeah, that's, doesn't feel like it's biting. There's no, that ain't biting. It doesn't work. So we're gonna try the bigger ones. If they're too small, just get bigger ones, right? 
Okay. We're just going to tighten this in. Oh, yeah, that's definitely the right size there. So you got to go okay. with the bigger one. Bigger ones. So the bigger ones are what you want, which, I mean, obviously. So while we're on this side, this has had, oh, a good 30 seconds or so to set up. And look how sticky it is already. Just to give you an idea, that's how sticky it is already. Okay, so we can just try to slip that in. Now, if this gets too sticky and it won't slide in, put a little bit of fresh uh, foam to foam on there and it will work like that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Cool. Here. Like that, please. See, right back drop shows. So, all right, we gotta do this other side. It's gonna be a little bit hard for me to reach. I'll have to do a little reach around here. All right, just like this. It's just one of those planes you don't want to break. You don't want to break anything on it. Okay, very good. All right, so now we need to flip this over with the mindset that our elevator is still detached. Okay. Proper checks and balances of flight control surfaces. That is so awesome looking. Okay, we're just gonna put this down here. We're gonna take our plain stain stand out of the way for now. That is gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna not be distracted by its gorgeousness. And we're just gonna lay this down right here. Okay, so you may wanna chalk your wheels if it's capable of rolling off your counter or whatever you're working on. So seriously, cause it could, it rolls pretty easy, okay? What's the next step? Antennas on the top, probably? Sure. Where do they go? We're kind of out of order now, so I'm not sure what you want to do next. Oh, you have, here, how about this camera crew? Here they go. Here, you can have that instruction manual and I'll look at this one. We have two printed this time. We normally don't do that. We don't normally print them at all. Here's a B. Those little screws go into the wings, almost certainly, for okay. the counterweights. Mm. Okay. Cool. There's a B antenna in the on the back of the fuse. Oh, right there behind the door. I see it. Right, but why do I have and two? And then one on the wing. Oh, it's on the wing. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So same thing, guys. It's really not anything to write home about. Just putting the foam to foam on the surface here, pretty heavy. And then just a little bit, kind of squeeze it into the, the crack there. And then I'm gonna take the antenna. These uh, the top style are the same, okay? Okay, so then pull this out and you can spread around the excess before it makes a mess. Give it a couple of rams in and then let this sit. Okay, so once you get that thing slathered, you can just let it sit for a few minutes. We had a real minor interruption there, memory issue on the phone. We'll just slide that back in there and then we should be good to go. That's beautiful. I love the antennas. Very cool. That's going to make a screen too, I think. Anytime you've got a, a skinny part like that on a plane. Mm. Okay, so the next step after we do that is, of course, to... We have to glue on this handle that's on the end of the wing. These things? Yeah. Yeah, there's... There's definitely a, a handle and then of course a counterbalance for the ailerons. So we can do that. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's a counterbalance also. And I'm not sure exactly how this works because I'm not privy to the details of this handle. I'm trying to figure out if this handle is actually a, uh, like a useful thing that makes the thing work like that. Wait, no, on the outside, right? No. It's on the inside. It's just kind of interesting because I'm trying to figure out where does this go? Does it go? It would, it would go in here, yeah. So it is correct, it's like an alignment tool. Okay. Okay, so this one, again, they call for CA. This is, this is gonna give us a little, bit, um, a little bit more flexibility than CA. And I don't know, I just feel like this is probably a better option for it but you guys can do whatever you want on this step if you think the ca is the way to go just use medium ca like they recommend 
I'm going to go ahead and use this foam to foam. So I'm just kind of splitting the difference here between the two. And then I'm going to take out a little bit here. See, there's just quite a bit on there now. And then I'm just going to dive in there again, go for seconds. And then this one here, we can just run that in. So then whatever, whatever amount of glue we had, we're just kind of splitting the difference, just sharing it among the two, okay? And then we'll just let that string up as much as it needs to. This is going to be a little harder to just lay down and come back to mm -hmm. just because of the nature of its part. So I guess in this case, really what I want to do is I want to put it on a surface that isn't going to stick to very much. And then we'll just grab it off there in a minute. Okay. We want to let that set so it's got a nice good tack on it. Okay, so we can put those black things in, which are the anti-tip. Wing tip guards. Wing tip guards, yep. yep. And then we also have the counterweights for the ailerons. So let's look at this. These just slide in with pressure. Yes. Okay, they are the same. They're symmetrical. So they just push in here. Very, very easy. Very easy to take out if you need that out of the way for storage. Um, that is cool. I would not want to get caught with that. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. just saying guys. So be careful with those. Um, also where these go on with screws. Yes. So, so they go in the actual control here. So that's the way this one goes, but we need to get that screw. So let's see what the screw choices are. There's that only mean, two left. Yeah. Right so here. it must be those smaller ones. Yeah. It says like 6.5 millimeter. If they don't work then we will find correct screws. Or Some, six millimeters, what it says. So that Some way, somehow. These appear to be identical. They are metal. Look at that, it's brass. Mm -hmm. That's really, really cool. This might be a little bit awkward to put on, but we'll find out. I would say all of the steps have been like pretty easy on mm -hmm. this plane so far. I think the radio setup might be a little bit more involved than some of the other planes that we've done. So it's definitely, if you guys are new to the hobby and you're trying to start with this plane, first of all, uh, you know, I, I would not encourage you to do that, even though you probably can technically. This is one hack of a plane. You're going to have your hands full and it's going to be scary. So I would say, you know, like Sport Cub S, UMX would be probably a lot better choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or an Apprentice, Apprentice 1.5, mm -hmm. really good choice. Um, Aero Scout, 1.1 meter, very good choice. Carbon, Carbon Cub S2, very good choice. This plane is an awesome plane. And if you want to buy it just to make sure you get one, I get it. But this, I would say this is probably a little bit beyond a beginner plane yeah. in every measure. Then, okay, we did that. Okay, so we got to stick those things in now. That's oh, probably yeah. tacked up okay. enough. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do you know that it's tacked up enough? I don't know. You just kind of do it and it works. That was really helpful. If you stick it in and it stays, then, you know, it's tacked up enough. Like this could go a little bit longer, to be honest, and it would probably tack up a little bit longer, but I'm okay with that. I feel like it's enough of a bite. Okay. Okay. I'm a little bit disappointed we had to glue those in, actually. That seems like something that should have been screwed in or, I wonder you know, if it was a shipping thing because of those wooden... Yeah, because the way that things Ooh, went together. Lame. I mean, there's there's always some detail that we don't know about. Um, okay, so the wings, this antenna, I think is going to make better sense to install after we insert the wings. Okay. So technically, we should be able to insert the wings now. And, oh, we have to do the leading edge slats, but I firmly believe it's going to be easier to do that with the wings installed. Okay. I, I mean, I could be wrong. Do you want to see? Let's see how bad it is to flip the plane over. Mm. I ha I mean, not the plane, but the um, leading edge slats. Obviously, are going to go on the other side, but we've got this. Oh, I hate doing that. It hurts my soul. Okay, so in looking at these, the horizon is supposed to go on the outside, right? No. Um, wait, inboard portion, I thought. Well, let's look at the picture here. Horizon logo near the wing root. Oh, okay. Well, they answered our question. So same exact scenario, but we're going to dry fit this first. 
Okay, see that? Very good, easy fit. Should be no problem at all. Okay, that's gorgeous. So you can if just you, keep looking at that. If you do them now, is it going to make it harder, more awkward to put the wing on? Or um, not really? I think the answer to your question is irrelevant. It's going to okay. be however hard it is. I mean, these things are removable wings, so... I would say yes. I mean, it's going to make it a little bit harder, but we're going to have them on there. We're going to have them on there, so there's not really any savings by not doing it. Okay. So Q-tip time. Mm. Everybody loves it when I break out the Q-tips. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply foam to foam here, foam to foam here, foam to foam on the face of each side of this. Then same thing here, here. Now I have installed uh, leading edge slats on different planes with CA and I've never honestly thought that there was, you know, some like huge advantage to using the CA. The instructions call for CA, but this is another good product. It's definitely a Horizon product. So I don't think they're going to really care what you use as long as it holds. Um, CA is just a little bit more common. I think people have CA more frequently. So they just said, what can we use that's very common? Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is going to be a superior bond, but that's, you know, largely my opinion, guys. I don't know because I haven't built it before. Now, the other thing is I'm not worrying about, I'm just, I'm just sticking it between there and just filling the crack. Oh, I kind of missed the crack that time. All right, so you'll notice that I just kind of hit the, the middle and I haven't really messed with it yet. I'm just going to let that breathe and, and cook off a little bit chemically. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go back to the first one and I'm just going to roll it through and just spread it so that it's not going to poop out everywhere. Um, this is just going to help to spread and give you a nice even contact area. These, these are not rocket science maneuvers, folks. I mean, we're not trying to beat a dead horse, but we're just kind of going through it ourselves. So we're going to tell you what we know about it, which is not much. Okay. I'm going to use the clean side to just get any strings. There's, there's some strings here. I've noticed look outside. Mm -hmm. Do you see this? See what we have to deal with? This cat. This is Pouncer. At least he came to the window today and not the screen. Pouncer likes to hey, bud. crawl up the top of our eight foot screen over here. Mm -hmm. And he gets door. all the way to the top and then he's like, hey, let me in. Yeah. It's like, dude, well, what are you thinking? He waits at the door, but no one can see him. So he has to get where you can see him. And then they, they dig on the glass, thinking that we'll... And you can't hear the meow at all. Yeah. He has the most pathetic meow, but it's also kind of cute. Okay, so that's tacking up as we speak. So here goes nothing. Okay, so we'll just get good penetration. Now, I am going to slide this in a little bit quicker then I did the other components. Uh, you'll notice that I waited quite a while on some of the other stuff. And that's, this is intentional, okay? Because I want to give it a chance to slide in. If it doesn't slide in well and it doesn't hold like what happened on this, mm -hmm. then you may have to then pull it out and wait a little bit longer, okay? So that's what we're going to do on this one. I'm going to pull it out because it's just wanting to kind of reject it. And then if you're doing this on your wife's counter, you want to be really careful to pull the strings so that it doesn't get on the granite and then later on to some expensive thing that Wait, you don't do the know last it. which one closest to the paper towel the strings yeah go. so that's what i'm talking about you just kind of get those strings and catch them so now we're going to let that set up for a minute and what do you think should we just do this one off camera or just show it yeah we, we can do it off camera let's do it off camera we'll come right back okay so we got glue spread just like we did on this one and we're going to come back now that it's had a chance to tack up longer. If I let it sit too long, I'll show you how to deal with it too. Okay. Like I said, the foam tack is a little bit different than CA. CA is pretty immediate. And so is this, if you let it tack up in time. Okay. See how it pulls in and it stays. If you try to, if you try to penetrate early, then it's just going to, it's just going to reject it. Yeah, that's staying a lot better that time. Yeah, see, right there. Now yeah. we're good. So now that side needs to sit for a minute, but we are just going to bask in the glory of this beauty. Look at that. Look up 
through there. Cool. That is just so cool. And then, obviously, look at the design of that wing. That is just so, so cool. And then, of course, you've got this. And then the counterweight for the aileron, just like mm -hmm. it would on real life. And that's a functional counterweight, by the way. Now, I don't know if it's needed, but it's still pretty awesome. Um, okay, so we'll just, you know what? Let's stick it in the hole. There's no reason not to. Camera crew, are you ready? Mm, no. Okay, so what, so we have to pull these things out just like we did before, because oh, they're gonna right. eventually go in here and then lock, okay? So, I'm just gonna turn this. Obviously, you have all your servo wires terminated there. And then where's our carbon fiber rod? The carbon fiber wing joiner is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Give them a close up of that. Awesome. Show them with your finger for color reference. Oh, I gotta... Yeah, I know. You're gonna have to put a finger out there or it's not gonna work. Awesome. You see that? How beautiful it is? Yeah. I mean, it's... I, the only plane that has a more beautiful wing joiner rod would be the three meter Fox. Fox. It's bigger and it's more beautiful, even still than that. Yes, that is beautiful. That is so cool. And yes, this one you can touch without any problems because it is encapsulated in. That is one really good fit. Oh, that's wow. incredible. Incredibly good fit. Okay, now let's just see how hard this is. While you're down there, could you uh, sure. tell me how hard this is? That's pretty easy. Because I can't see very good. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. There it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the antenna is on the other wing, evidently? Mm, yes. Okay. So I'm nervous that this is going to fall. So pop that one down. That one's on to pop up just a little bit. So we'll let the other one sit just a bit longer. I'm gonna turn this, so oh, okay. careful. Yep. All right, so camera crew, see, we just turned it just to be on the safe side. If something tips, we don't want it to fall off, but as you can see, it will stand up with only one wing on, and that's pretty uncommon. That tells you that it's very stout on the uh, mm -hmm. bottom. So that is very uncommon. Okay, so you can tell this is nice and tacked up. When you slide it in, it doesn't come back out. So that's what we're gonna do now. Mm. I'm not thinking that's probably not quite yet. as tacked, mm. not quite as tacked up as the other one. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So while we're over here, shoot, I could have had this. Oh, I could have had this glue cooking Where did you off. Put that one? Oh, it's over here. It's over I here. See it. It's on. No, it's on the white book. Thank you. Yeah. Who put that on a white book? Mm, you. Did I? Yeah. That seems kind of dumb. Wouldn't be the first time I've done something dumb today. All right, so then we're just gonna grab this and just take a little bit more. Okay, so now that needs to sit for a moment. Yeah, those are kind of staying in there, but they're pulling up, so. Especially this end one, it was the same on the other one too. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull this out and let this, let this glue set up for just a few minutes longer. Don't worry about the strings, no big deal. Don't worry about the strings, it just makes me nervous. Why does it make you nervous? I want to break it. It's not gonna break. That thing is really strong, actually. Okay, so while everything is setting up, let's go ahead and join this wing on. Oh, okay. So, this is pretty easy stuff. Twist and drop, twist and drop, okay. Feel kind of like Legos. or Lego for you Lego snobs. There's no plural to Legos if you're Austrian. Okay, so that handle is decorative. Whew, that makes me feel oh, so much better. Okay. Okay, cause yeah, that handle is decorative. I was thinking, why did we do yeah, that? Yeah, why did we do that? <laughs> yeah, it's, I was gonna say, make sure they get a, a little better angle. You might wanna go higher so you can see it up against my hand, which is dark now. <laughs> that didn't work. This wing, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you see that gap? 
there's just a little teeny bit of a gap here. My fingernail is in it, okay? That's okay. I just wanted you to know that that is conventional. It's not a problem. You didn't do something wrong. It's just the way it works, man. That is. That thing is big. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Okay, so antenna, the glue is cooking off, so it should be okay. Where is this thing going to live? After it lives on my island for a while? I don't know. Okay, so this is these are sliding in nicely. There's more. There's more. Um, a lot more resistance this time. That's good. That's what we want. Because that means it's gonna hold when you mm -hmm. get when you get your hands off there. Yeah. I know. Oh yeah, that's way better. This one on the end is also wanting to peel up just a hair, so I'm just gonna push it back down. Okay, so <laughs> we are like so close to being done building this thing now. That build wasn't hard. No, it was not. It was a little bit more intense than some planes we've done in the recent past. But boy, that thing is fantastic. Okay, so next step, prop. This should be a really easy prop install. Oh, there is only one screw left. Good. So the way you do this is you unscrew this. Okay, so cue the uh, safety worries over a prop being installed. Okay. Okay. This machine surface receives this. Okay. So that goes just like this all the way down. Then this goes here. Then this nut, which feel how light this nut is. Oh my gosh. It's like nothing. That's crazy. Yeah. It's aluminum. And aluminum is very light. Why? I feel like that should be heavy or something. Well, it depends on the type of plane. Depends on if they have it balanced or not. Typically, you don't want a, a ton of weight on the prop, but it just kind of depends on the application because hmm. it takes a lot of power to start spinning it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is so cool. All right, so then this spinner is going to go straight on here. And you get a nice clean fit. So nice. I do need to get that the one. last screw. There's only one screw of this size, right? Yes. And it was in its own bag. It's in its own bag. Yeah. Everything okay. else we use for assembly. We'll give you guys a bag. close up of what this looks like too. This is, this is not unlike other uh, spinner. Should be a 10 millimeter screw. 10 millimeters, machine screw, no bite. It's not a self tapper. Okay. Looks like you can use a small screw, small screwdriver, or possibly a number two. Sometimes they don't fit into the, yeah. That actually does go in, but it's probably gonna damage the finish. So I'm gonna go with the smaller one. Be careful you don't push your plane off the counter because this thing rolls easy. Okay. okay. Then we're going to tighten this down. All right. That is amazing. Guys, this plane is, this plane is built. Man, that cool. thing is like impressive. <laughs> Very. That is one of the most gorgeous planes we've done in a long time. If not the most gorgeous foamy that we've ever seen. I mean, just comparing it against the Carbon Z Cub, which would be in the echelon of plane, it's definitely a lot nicer than that. And this is, um, to be honest, not that much more expensive. So, I mean, it's, it's more, but that is just amazing. Look at that play on the back wheel. That is so cool. Look at this, guys. I just want, I can't resist. Oh, wow, that is cool. Watch the dampening. That's not just a spring, guys. It's dampened. That is awesome. Man, I so bad. Wow, that's heavy. It's <laughs> heavy when it's all together. But that thing is absolutely phenomenal. I so badly want to drop this on the ground right now. Why? Because I want to show the landing gear working, no. but I'm not going to. We're going to wait until we fly it. Yes. Okay, so 
it's, this thing is expansive, okay? So it's kind of like, there's not a lot of good ways for me to hold it. Because <laughs> yeah. there's antennas and stuff all over the place. But man, this thing is just absolutely gorgeous. So I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go through the process of getting things cleaned up and come right back with the radio setup next. All right, YouTube, so we're gonna get ready to do the radio setup on the NX8. But before we do that, we have to get the center of gravity markings on the plane. We're gonna assume the center of gravity with the use of the standard battery, the battery that's recommended in the manual repeatedly. Obviously, there's a whole range of battery packs that are sitting here. 5,000 4S all the way up to 7,000 milliamp 6S. But we're gonna start with the 5,000 Gen 2 30C, okay? Obviously, it comes equipped with the IC5. If you don't have an IC5 charger, we've got the S2200 here. Very happy with that so far. If you haven't experienced this, one of the reasons why it's so nice is because of this. Because you can switch between IC5 and IC3. So when you go to the IC3, you plug in your Gen 2 pack and watch how hard this is to set up. Set up your auto discharge and all that good stuff. And it does everything. You literally do nothing. So look, just full disclosure. Okay, so here's a 4006S. Let's go ahead and plug that into the other channel. This is how hard it is. Takes a couple seconds and there you go, done. So very cool, very nice, very easy. Now that being said, I think that the 5,000 is the way to go. So when we mark it, we'll use that. The markings are gonna be at 95 and 105 millimeters from the front edge of the leading slat. So I've got these wonderful calipers from Danny. Thank you, Danny. If I turn it on, we're right at 95. Okay, so if you've never used calipers before, so these are the same as here. So in my case, I'm gonna come up here from the leading edge, make sure that the slat is actually glued in there. And there happens to be a seam on the wing, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but there is a seam that runs along this wing all the way down the length of it, mm. okay? So if you wanna just test a couple of different spots to verify, your 95 millimeters is right there, okay? So now let's unlock this handy dandy caliper and go out to 105. Okay, so 105, that's good enough. Now let's see where that hits. 105 takes us back to the end of the decal roughly. So I'll just make a detent there. And then I already know that I'm gonna make a detent here, okay? And yes, I am doing a detent and I'm gonna mark it with a marker. And yes, it is not probably my favorite thing to do on such a beautiful plane, but center of gravity is worthy of ugliness, okay? It's a very critical component of making a plane fly right, and it's very hard to distinguish that marking, mm -hmm. okay? So I wanna know where it is, and I don't wanna have to search for it. This has got a lot of print on it, so it's, it's easy to lose these things in the back. Now watch this when I, watch when I pivot this. So cool, <laughs> just like the real one. It squishes down, and then you can pivot it on the mains like this. That it's just so cool. Watch the yeah. sink. I'm watching it okay. like a hawk. Okay, so now this side, we're gonna do the same thing. I wanna be able to get in here with a comfortable gap, so I'm going about halfway from here to here. Okay. This will just make a quick field test for us. Up and over, sorry, camera crew. Mm -hmm. So we're currently at 105. It's locked down, so about halfway through. Yeah, so this one has different decal positions. There's a 105 mark will be right there. And then just for grins and giggles to make sure that we're still the same, we'll go to 95. Okay, so that's close to 90, 94.97, should be within the tolerance. All right, so here's our other marking right here. Okay, so same thing, a 10 millimeter gap here. 
between the front and between the back. So that is actually quite a tight CG for mm -hmm. such a big and more than likely um, very capable plane. So I do not want to start a plane like this tail heavy because it's only going to fly once. If you fly a plane tail heavy, you're lucky if they fly once. Uh, you might get it flying, but you're not going to get it back. If you fly it nose heavy, it's going to fly kind of crappy. You won't have enough elevator to pitch the plane the way you want. Okay, so now let's talk about where the battery goes quick, because this is kind of all part of the show. Gen 2 packs are really nice about this, okay? They're very simple. There's no balance lead, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's see how the Velcro works. There's a ferrite core back here from the, that's, that's on there, that ferrite magnet there. That's going back on the ESC lead. So these are stretched out in such a way that I can't quite get the battery in yet. So I'm gonna have to undo them. This is just the, the way they come from the factory. Do they slip? They slip, thank goodness. If these things slip, they work so much better, okay? If they don't slip, you might as well not put them in the plane. Because mm -hmm. if you can't spin them around, then you can't tighten them down. Okay, so we're just gonna slip this in here and we're, we're just gonna kind of guess and check for now because we don't know exactly where that's gonna need to be. These are kind of the disappointing straps. They're kind of like the middle ground. They're not the crappiest ones, but they're not the strongest either. A Little bit disappointed to see that on this plane, a plane of this echelon. I mean, mm -hmm. looking at all the different amazing details, but you, they might've been concerned about the clearances here. So if you have a clearance issue, I get it. But if it's a, you know, dollars and cents, yeah, no, that was probably a miss. Or they were out or something. Okay, now I'm flipping this over. See how I flipped it over? And then it sticks back to itself. And then it doesn't have to be over in this spot. Plus it makes it a lot easier to get the tail when you're ready to undo the plane or undo the battery, okay? So I'm just gonna do that. I kind of like that better. That's easier to get it out. Okay, so we're just going to pull this so it's right on the edge of the battery tray. Caution, motor may become hot. <laughs> I have a, a few combination of words that I could uh, supplement that with. Yes, probably so. Okay, so that obviously fits the battery no problem. Yep, for sure. Okay, so we're gonna check CG right now, and we're just gonna see how this thing goes, okay? <laughs> wow. My fingers, the pads of my middle fingers. Okay, so thinking of the carbon Z cub. So speaking of the carbon Z cub, the foam on the wing is hollow. The wing is hollow. So when you're checking the CG or supporting the plane, you'll dent and com compress that wing, okay? This wing is going to be a lot easier to manipulate with the exception of the fact that this thing is on there. The leading edge slaps are always a pain. The wing is strong. You don't, have to, you don't feel like you're gonna squish it, okay? Because this is not a hollow wing. It's got a very complex shape to it. So very excited. The airfoil is very cool on this wing. So those things considered, we have the battery in. I feel like we should be able to plug that in um, when we're ready. But for now, we're going to jump back to the setup for the radio. Now, on a typical bind and fly plane, I'm just going to go over this really quick. When you turn on your NX8 or your NX6, now just to be clear, the NX6 is actually a seven channel but you're gonna lose some of the features if you don't have the eight channels, okay? I'm not saying you can't fly this plane with a six channel. You can fly this with a five channel. You just won't get all the features, okay? As long as it's got the DSMX capable uh, transmitter, you can fly it. Now, is that the way I would do it? No, absolutely. I wanna be able to control flaps. I wanna be able to do safe select. I wanna be able to do all the features. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sit down and we're gonna look at we're gonna also just know where this is. 
You don't have to use the bind plug, but we, you know, it's available if you want it. We're going to find the page that talks about the setup, okay? This is the setup I'm talking about. It's on page four of the English manual that we printed, okay? So it talks about all the different setup features. See, look, DXE. Hmm. Okay, DX8, and then all the rest of these. So there's the NX8 right there. So we're gonna be in this box here. So now if you're doing a plug and fly, they usually have another page that talks about throws. Go back, it's the very second, it's the second page. Yep, right here. So this is the other place you can look. That also mentions the CG. There's another picture later that shows um, the CG as well, kind of on a elevation, or excuse me, a top view. Yeah. yeah. So we've got the 100 plus or minus five millimeters. Flight timer's five minutes, so we'll set that, and we're gonna disrespect that badly because we have telemetry on this thing. Um, but we'll set it just for a good, good laugh when we get like <laughs> six times that long. Um, ser servo reversing, start with the blank aggro. Okay, so those are the things you want to start with. And then we're gonna go over here and do this. This talks about the different safe, select, um, binding procedures, if you want safe, Okay, so safe, if you don't know, is auto leveling. So your plane, when you let go of the sticks on a normal plane, it's just gonna fly until it crashes, okay? With safe, it's gonna auto correct. It's gonna, it's gonna level the wings and it's gonna level the pitch and it's gonna keep the plane flying straight and level. It's also gonna limit your bank to a certain point and then not let you go any further, okay? When you're in AS3X, which is artificial three axis stabilization, it's actually just stabilization. SAFE uses AS3X as the basis for making decisions, okay? So AS3X is stabilization only. You can fly this plane and you can bind it, meaning you can set this transmitter to work with that receiver with AS3X only or with SAFE and AS3X only. If you assign it with safe select, you have to designate a switch to turn it on and off, or it will be on all the time until otherwise indicated by the transmitter. Now that being said, if you have a lower level transmitter and you want to bind and safe select and turn it on and off, you can actually change your um, switch that's controlling, like say the flaps, you can turn it on and then change back to the flaps and then you can turn it back off. It's just a pain. Most people don't wanna go through that trouble. So we'll go through all those steps, but the first thing you have to do is actually create the new model. So from anywhere on this transmitter, you can just press the back and cancel at the same time to go to your model select, or alternatively, you can click, go into the function list, Scroll down to system setup. This is your RF indicator that tells you that you're transmitting. We have picked this color scheme because it works well for filming. It's not necessarily going to be the best choice for everybody, but it works really good for us. So then we're going to go down to model select and we're going to scroll down to add new model. Okay. Like this. You can also do an add new bind and fly, which this may be one of the planes on there, it may not be. I'm not sure, I've never done that. I don't wanna teach you guys how to get this done bare minimum, I wanna teach you how to do it. So add new model. This is where you would select if it's a heli or a sailplane or whatever. <clears throat> they want us to do an acro. The way you know that it's supposed to be an acro is that if you look in the computerized, start all transmitter programming with a blank acro, okay? So you're gonna be renaming it as well. So create. This is gonna automatically assign it to the highest number. And then you can go into the model type to verify. Yep, we're on acro. If you were to change that after you make any changes, it's gonna clear everything you've done, okay? Model name, so it's number 21 colon space and then the character start, okay? So you can click and then it goes black and then you can scroll through. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So it's gonna be capital D and then I'm gonna scroll over. So we'll do this and come right back. So we have Draco 
Space 2.0M, which I usually call the model whatever Horizon calls it, okay? This is a Horizon Hobby plane, which is made by the brand E-Flight. E-Flight is a brand of Horizon Hobby, just like Spectrum is a brand of Horizon Hobby, okay? So when I say Horizon Hobby, I use it interchangeably, which confuses some people. My apologies for confusing some people. You'll notice it beeped weird. That's evidently normal. It does it every time I make a new model. So I'm up to 21 models in the new NX lineup. I think I have like 80 in my DX18. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then that's not all the planes we have. Obviously, there's some more that are just like ready to flies and things like this. Okay, so aircraft type. This is where you're gonna set up. You're gonna start looking to this for your instructions. So you can go to the system setup, model utilities, airplane. Wing type is one aileron and one flap. Okay, so this says normal. You wanna change that to one aileron and one flap. But Brian, we have four servos. No, you have two channels. Okay, see, you could actually run it like this too, but that means you would need an additional two channels on your transmitter and receiver, <clears throat> okay? So that's what you need, the normal tail. We're gonna go to next. We're gonna scroll down to this picture, this goofy looking picture, and just scroll through and find an appropriate picture. I was just gonna double check that there isn't a Draco on here. I don't see a Draco yet. So I'm gonna put probably like the carbon cub looking thing. There we go. All right, so now down below here, it's gonna talk about channel assign auxiliary two to switch A, not available on DX6 or DX6E, okay? So aux two to switch A. So you can go in here to channel assign. Switch A says gear. Aux 2 is B, they're wanting it to be A. So I just switched that to A. I don't know if I'm gonna use that by the way, I may change that. Okay, then they want us to have, go to digital switch setup, switch position A. So I'm gonna go to next, I don't know if this is where I need to go. Okay, so we're fine there. So now I'm gonna walk out. Digital switch setup, there we go. Okay, so select A. So position zero is minus 100, not 100. You can also hit clear and it goes back to 100. Okay, so the default, see how that works. So I'm just scrolling until it gets to minus 100. And then position one is also minus 100 or position one at plus 100, that's motor reversing, motor reversing, yeah. We'll get there someday. <laughs> so that is gonna switch whether or not you're allowed to have motor reversing but your throttle stick down is still going to dictate whether or not you have throttle, okay? Mm. So now we need to set up flaps. They give us a very detailed analysis of the flap setup. Flap systems next. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna turn it to switch B in my case. They recommend switch D. I have a hard time getting to switch D, so I use switch B, okay? Position zero, according to this manual, is minus 100. Elevator correction at that is zero. Then position one is minus 20. And elevator correction is 10. That's pretty significant. Then position two is nine. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then that's position correction is going to be plus 16. And I want that to be deployed at a speed of two seconds. Now I noticed the phenomena. If you bump this switch while you're doing this, it will change the speed for each click of your button. That's not what you want to happen, mm. okay? So be careful about that. And it will look like it's right until you get onto the right switch position. Okay, so that's all done. And I think we should be done. So now at this point, 
you want to set up throttle cut, which is very critically important in our application, I use switch H. I don't want to delay and I do want it to inhibit throttle. See how it's inhibited until I unlock it, then it's working. Now, if you're using switch A, I want that to continue to throttle cut no matter what, okay? You could also mix this in to do different things because of the reverse, but for now, we're just gonna assume it's normal, okay? So I'm gonna also show you something. Click over here and you can see monitor. The throttle is cut because throttle's not moving. When I unlock it, it goes, okay? Very good. Throttle cuts on. Now let's set the timer. This is gonna be a backup plan. One time is active. That means when I move the stick past 25%, it's gonna start the timer and keep it running. Very simple. Now at one minute, I want nothing. At 30 seconds, I want nothing. At 20 seconds, I want nothing. At 10 seconds, I want voice. At expiration, I want tone and vibrate and then every minute we'll take a tone. And I'm just scrolling to the very end. Yep, so we're good. So you notice the timer started. If I press back or cancel, it clears it. When I move this past 25%, it starts. You're, it's, it's, it's not tied to this condition of the actual throttle cut, okay? So even in monitor mode, you can see that's not working. The throttle's not actually working, but it still starts the timer. Okay, so if throttle cut was off, it has the same exact function. It still starts when you go over 25%, okay? Just a couple things to keep in mind. So now, if you double click the back, that gets you your volume for the obnoxious noises and things that can distract you while you're flying. Now, there's also telemetry, which will automatically connect and set up. There's also forward programming, which you can't change on an AR 637 TA. On a T, you can manipulate the forward programming, but you're responsible to set it up totally because it's for like a plug and fly plane. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to bind. So this is the part where normally people would be encouraged to take the prop off and, um, you know, cause you don't want it to like take off and fly through your window cause that would kind of suck. So we're gonna just pretend that we did that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do in our application is get the plane in a, a place where it's gonna be safe. Okay, so we're gonna have it mechanically braced against something. If it were to start going, it's not going to start going, but we're just gonna pretend like it's the worst case scenario so that everybody is safe, okay? We're gonna mechanically prevent the plane from going forward easily, and that's very easy to do in our application. So this window, is going to be very easy to take off because there's tabs down here. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. And then we have a bind plug up here. This is going to be challenging to do with the bind button. Mm -hmm. You can press that, but the way it will work is I have to plug in the battery for safe select. I wanna bind with safe select so I can demonstrate how it works. I don't have to use it, but I'll be able to demonstrate it. And I can just turn it off, okay? So in order to do the safe select binding with the button, you have to plug in the battery, then hold that button all while turning this back on and holding this button. Mm -hmm. Or you have to go into the bind menu, which I've never had great success with when both are on, okay? So I'm gonna turn this off at this point. It's always a good idea to turn off the transmitter. Okay, so it is off, stick down, Throttle cut on, reversing not on. It's flaps in your normal condition, and we never set up Expo either. So we'll set up Expo as soon as we're done, okay? okay? So we'll talk about that. Expo is exponential. It's how you soften the middle of the sticks so that the plane is easier to fly. You can also set up dual rates. We tie those together and we have a standard configuration we generally run, unless we're doing a strange plane um, that has a flight controller in it. Sometimes the flight controllers need different settings for that. So we'll go over those on those planes. But this one, we're gonna do it this way. Okay, so we are gonna use the bind plug on this one. They give you a nice extension cord so that it's out from this messy area down here, okay? 
So that's really nice of them to do that. When we're all said and done, we can go ahead and take care of that. So the safe select, they give you all the different methods. So there's safe, safe select enabled, there's safe select enabled using the bind plug, or there's safe select disabled and safe select disabled using the bind plug. It's a different procedure, okay? So we are going to do this with the bind plug. So install the bind plug, throttle stick down, then plug in the battery. Then after you see the light start flashing, we'll unplug this and then do the bind. So that should be really easy. Now what the bind button does is it shorts ground to signal. So if you look at this lead, there's an orange wire, a red wire, and a brown wire. The orange is signal. The red is power, 12 volts, or excuse me, uh, five volts in this case from the BEC. And then brown is negative or signal ground, which are actually synonymous in this case. Okay, so that's stuck in there. Now we need to plug in the battery. This is where you wanna be in a safe position in case all heck breaks loose, okay? Because if something were to go wrong, you don't wanna lose your arm. Okay, so I'm getting myself in a safe position and I have my body to brace the plane. Now we move our body back to here. We're listening to the ESC. It's not armed. If you were to look at the receiver, you'll notice it's flashing. This is not a receiver, that's a receiver. Now we unplug. That initiates the safe select part. I'm gonna press and hold this, then turn on the transmitter. I'm gonna use my hand to hold this. Now I can let go of the bind button. Two dances. That's the second dance. Throttle hasn't started, that's good. Everything is up and running. Elevator up, down, we need to set that by the way. Ailerons left, right, there's a big mix, that means safe is on. And then of course we've got rudder left and right. Steerable tail wheel is working. And then throttle we haven't tested, throttle cut is now tested. Now we're, gonna not, we're not gonna power this up, we're just gonna see it spin, okay? Very good amount of power, that is just so you guys know, that is about, there's braking, mm -hmm. there's braking. Now, be careful when you do something like this. That's braking, guys. What does braking do? It stops the prop. It's actively powering it to stop. Okay, so that is really cool. That should help a lot with drag. If you want extra drag, because you're coming in for a steep approach, you need to remember to give it a little bit of throttle, like 5% that will keep it spinning so that you have that tractoring effect. Throttle cut is back on and tested. That's very critical, okay? Remember, when you get to the flying field, the prop is gonna be on the plane. So before you start jumping into a bunch of safety information, we are bound, we are fully bound, everything is done, safe is currently working and I'll show you how to tell. This is going back in, this is going back on, okay? Now, I am going to do a very important step here. This is a safety step. Throttle cuts on, everything's been tested, and now I can unplug the power. Why did you just unplug the power? Why did you also shut off your radio? Because I have learned from many, 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 many times working on machines, that it's always kind of a nice idea to start the machine and then you're starting from a fresh start. Okay, you always start with the transmitter, turn it on, and yes, I am kind of going back to the basics because I know that this plane is so amazingly popular that some of you are going to be getting it and you probably should be flying this for the first plane, but I'm gonna still teach you how to do it so you don't like chop your arm off. Okay, the radio's on, throttle cuts on, walk over to monitor, make sure your throttle's not working, which is good. Okay, keep this in a place. If the plane were to take forward, you'd be safe, okay? You don't wanna do it here because if that starts running, you could get cut. Okay, so keep your body in a safe spot. There are a lot of safety features that help prevent you getting cut. Every single one of them can fail. I've never had it fail. I have made some mistakes with UMX planes and I've been cut. But a UMX plane is an ultra micro extreme, so it's very small. 
Okay, so we're gonna put this back on as well. Everything has been tremendous fit and finish. All right, there we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my hand on here and test throttle. Throttle cut is working, good. Now, everything is working with the exception of this. This needs to be attached, but we can't do it with safe select on. Why? Because safe select is going to be trying to bring the plane to a level condition, a flight attitude like this. Not like this, like this, okay? Because your plane is gonna be flying like this in the air, not like this, this is just taxing, okay? So the first thing we're gonna have to do, if we wanna do this the easiest way, would be to put it in a level attitude. We've already tested the throttle cut, so I'm gonna be grabbing this and flipping the plane over. Why? So that we can see what the control surfaces do. It's trying to level the plane and look at the rudder. It's also helping find the quickest route to level. Okay, is that quickest? Yep. And look what happens to the ailerons as I flip over. They get leveled out and look at the rudder. It's leveled out. Look what it's doing. It's gonna try to keep that nose level, okay? Pretty cool, right? It's really easy to see on a plane that big. <laughs> yeah, it is, which is pretty cool. So now what we need to do is we need to make an, an assignment for safe select. We need to make a designation for what channel is going to control it on and off, okay? So first things first, while throttle cuts on, I wanna see what happens with the thrust being reversed. Okay, so right now, nothing happens, it's safe. Thrust is reversed, oh, that is cool. There's reversing lights, that is so cool. Okay, as you can tell, nothing happens with throttle cut, that's important. I'm gonna have my arm here and I'm gonna turn throttle cut off. That is totally, that is totally. That's <laughs> so cool. Throttle cut is on and there is braking on both modes. Reversing is off. So the lights, the reversing, reversing lights come on. That when is it, so that's cool. Awesome. And it's one, two, three, four lights as a warning to other pilots. That's very smart. Okay, very cool and very smart. So now we need to make an assignment, but normally on a safe select plane, I would use this for safe on and off, but because this has thrust reversing, um, or rather just motor rotation control, we're gonna use the D switch, okay? okay. So there's the D for switch. Safe. Yep. Okay. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna see that it's assigned, and it's not, okay? Nothing's changing, okay? So throttle cut is on, we're just gonna, for safety's sake, we'll click, go into the function list, System setup, disconnect RF. The first time you do this, I always like to hold the plane in case something goes awry because you technically are disconnected. Now, this is also a good time to take note of what fail safe does. Fail safe is going to hopefully get everything into safe, which it did, okay? Fail safe is something that's important to help you get your plane back to the ground if your transmitter shuts off or browns out. Browning out meaning that it's off for a millisecond or two milliseconds or one second and then coming back on because there's a startup period. It takes a couple seconds to do that. So that's what fail safe does. Fail safe has nothing to do with safe per se. Safe is a totally different function. AS3X is a different function, but they have similar lingo. So not to confuse anybody. All right, so from system setup, we're going to scroll down to channel assign and we're going to click into that. And now we're just gonna look. Okay, so auxiliary two is controlled by this switch. That's important. Looks like auxiliary one is somehow blocked out for some reason because we have flaps on this plane. Gear is not being used by anything, right? Yeah, because we're not using gear. That's aux three. That's aux three right now. Hmm. So aux two, so aux one. So gear is just gonna be gear, right? So we'll just use gear. We'll make an assignment to gear to be active on the D switch, okay? So now that's D is gonna control gear. It's now walking out, throttle cuts on. We need to verify this worked. I don't know if it did. I think it might not have. Okay. Oh, that's because, look, different modes. This one's already controlling something, okay? 
So we might need to dig into that a little bit more. But mm -hmm. for now, let's go over to monitor. You know what? I'm OK with the flight controls changing that. But I want to have an independent control, OK? I probably want this to control the lights. So that will give us all the different independent points for controlling the lights. Let's see what they talk about in that. Because I remember seeing something in there in the manual. We have to do the safe set select designation. Here you go. Here's the lights. Plug the light controller into the gear channel, port five. Assign mm -hmm. port five to the rotary knob. Okay. So port five needs to be assigned. Okay, so that's fine. So what we're gonna do is right now we only have three conditions. And then just for safety's sake, there's also reverse. Okay, so it looks the same as this condition. You understand? Oops, wrong switch. Oh, yeah, okay. So I know what we need to do. Throttle cuts on and tested, okay? So now what I need to do is I'm going to go back into system setup, disconnect RF, go to channel assign, and I want gear switch to be assigned to the knob. Just move it and it will, it will change that setting, okay? So now this is going to control our lights, and now we need to, whoops, now we need to set auxiliary three to this. That's going to allow us then to turn on safe select. D. Walking out, everything comes up, it's working fine. Now, as we spin through the lights, we've got nothing. We've got just a tail light. Do we have the nav lights on? Uh, yes. Yep. And we have strobes. Okay. Then as we continue to progress, it turns on the beacon on the top. As we continue to progress, the front lights come on. As we continue to progress, we have another beacon on the bottom. Yeah, on bottom. Yep. And then we also have the backup lights. Now I'm going to go back to the normal flight mode where everything is off except for that. Okay. Then when I put it into thrust reverse mode, nothing happens. Okay. Yep. I don't, it's not switching anymore. You know why? Because that was actually tied to gear as well. So we, we have now separated the lights from that switch, mm. okay? The default switch was designated for gear, okay? So we've now fixed that. All right, great. So we can, we can add a mix for that later. But for now, I'm going to go back to monitor. Throttle cuts on. Everything's tested. Now switch D is auxiliary three. So now we can do our safe select designation. Sorry, the lights kind of threw me off there, guys. So now the designation part is... Real easy, but I'm just going to find it on the page so that you guys can look at it if you want to look at it. I know what you need to do already, but again, I want to show it on the screen. You're looking for a double dance when you turn on the plane for the first time. Okay, so here we go. Assigning a switch. This is the part we're going to be doing. Okay, let's go back just a little bit. There you go. So if you need to pause the screen, go ahead and pause the screen. But for now, let's go ahead and make our assignment. Five times means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes the eleventh because you forget where you started. <laughs> okay. Sticks down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The last time you'll see it dance. Okay, off the sticks. Now, we should be out of safe here or here. It's kind of hard to tell. The easiest way to tell would be test throttle cut. Okay, good. Now I need to flip the plane on its back to see what the ailerons do. That is the most definitive way to know if you're in safe. Mm -hmm. We are not in safe right now, okay? So that switch condition right now is down. D is down. I want to rotate that. So that safe is not there, but it's there. Because yeah. I normally fly with safe off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Because safe is currently on. So I'm going to do this very easily. I'll walk back to regular weight or regular running mode. Click, go to servo setup, travel, click and scroll over to reverse, and then go to aux. 
3, our assignment for safe. Now it's reversed. So now throttle cuts on. I always say that because I'm about to put my hand where I'm going to get hurt if I make a mistake. So I say it to remind myself. I'm not doing it to prove anything to anybody. I'm doing it for my own safety. Okay, so not doing anything. Now safe is on. Okay, now that's the middle setting and that's the off setting. Okay, the middle setting has no, has no function. Okay, so just be aware of that. So we have fully programmed this plane. It's got every function set up now, um, up to and including the lights, which can be, I almost think what we need to do now is basically show them the S3X operating too. So throttle cut is off. We have to go over 25% per second. It's in reverse right now. The throttle is going to be way, 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 way more efficient going forward than it will be going backward. Mm. Okay, because those props are designed to, to go one direction. Right. In this case, um, the real Draco had uh, variable pitch. So we're going to lay this on the ground real quick. Okay, so safe AS3X rather is working right now. Do you see the rudder? See how as I pivot the plane, as I yaw the aircraft, it goes to that side. When I yaw it toward me, it comes toward me. The elevator, when I let this down quickly, it goes down. When I pull it up quickly, it goes up. That's going to resist environmental impact. Now, this aileron, I'm going to go down with it. It should go down as well. Down. And then on the way up, up. Now I'm going to look at this one. Up and then down. As long as it goes the same direction, you're golden. Now, what we needed to do, the only build part left is to set up the elevator. Yes. We never actually landed the one ball joint. This is a very critical step, so you have to get this right. Don't forget to do this. Now I have to see if there's a place I can even lay this down. Mm. Yep. Ooh, set there? Yep. Yep, we're good. And then maybe scooch it in a little bit towards the, it's right, huh? right on the edge of the counter. Okay, but we're not in safe, so it's okay. Right. Okay, so the plane stand isn't actually necessary for this. I don't know why I was thinking that, but really all we have to do is just get this nose down on the ground mm. and then we'll be able to reach. But it's a little bit hard on the prop, as you can see. It's kind of bending it a little bit. Um, by the way, Check out the instrument cluster. That's so cool. Yep, that is really, really, really cool. And then watch this. Yep, that stays on all the time. You guys see these lights? Mm -hmm. That is just really, really, really cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'll probably mix the flap so that it automatically actuates this control surface a little oh. bit. And then when you're coming in with flaps on, then these lights will come on in certain conditions. Cool. Whoa, it changes. Do you see the kittens? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like I always take my children to the top of a, you know, to tower to clean them just in case, you know, they would fall. They would fall, you know, hundreds of body lengths but down. He got up there all by himself. That is really cool. So, all right, so we're good to go here. Now we just need to hook up this one last control surface. And what I want you to do is just come so you can sight down this way here. You'll notice that this is not lined up. Okay, this is not lined up. This needs to be brought down just a hair. So how do we do that? Well, we need to basically extend this rod out a little bit. And once we've done that, then we can center this, okay? So this needs to be square like this to start. Okay. It may need to be adjusted a little bit like this for neutral flight. It may need to be adjusted a little bit like this for neutral flight. I don't know yet. AS3X is not gonna auto level this, but watch what happens with safe on. It's gonna attempt to move this as the pitch of the airplane changes. So that's why you have to have safe select off to do this step. It's off now, okay? So this can be spun by hand more than likely, but if it gives us any problems, I know I need to go out. In fact, I'm just gonna get some pliers. It's gonna be easier. You have to sometimes brace the shaft so that when you're spinning it, it'll spin out for you. Sometimes you don't need to do that, but a lot of times you do. By the way, just a quick note. This plane is big, 
but it's not quite as big as the carbon Z cub. It is, it's just like a bigger plane. It's, this, mm -hmm. this is actually pretty compact for a two meter plane, um, but it's still got a huge presence. Yeah. So, all right, without further ado, So I need to extend this out. So I'm just going to hold this. Camera crew, are you mm. getting a good angle? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's just awkward, so yeah. I can't really move very much. So there's one and a half turns out. There's two turns out. There's three turns out. There's four turns out. That's kind of a lot, but I bet that's probably getting pretty close. Oh, right. Okay, so then all you have to do is just kind of line up the ball joint and hold that there. Sorry, mm -hmm. I gotta block you. That's really close. That's really close. Um, I don't know that I can get it any better than that mechanically. I, I feel like it's, if anything, I would need to go out just a hair. Let's go one more turn or one more half turn. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Still might be too much. Yeah, it's possible. So just one more half turn. Okay, so there's one more half turn. Mm. That's pretty stinking good. Okay, yeah. that's good. I'm setting it. So the reason we waited till the end is because it's sometimes pretty challenging. You want to show them from this side here. It's challenging sometimes to get these off of here once you get them on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't feel like it wants to slide in there properly. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a correct tool for this job, but I'm going to use the pliers that I have here. Some of you are screaming at the screen. No, use the other style of pliers, the ones that are designed for that ball joint. Okay, you'd have to have them first. There it is. So now it's on. Okay, you verify it's on. Make sure that you're confident, 100% confident that that's good. Then grab your controls and move it. That's a lot of throw. Yes, it is. Okay, so I gotta lay these things down and we'll come right back. Okay, so one other thing we didn't talk about yet, but we need to talk about, that is awesome. It clears our faucet. <laughs> our faucet is pretty tall. It is. Just, you know, that's how I really measure the success of a plane is by if it clears our faucet. Okay, so let's talk about Expo for a minute, okay? Throttle cuts on, tested, everything's good. Elevator up, elevator down. That is huge amount of throw. <laughs> roll left, roll right. That rudder, left, right, lights off, lights all the way on, insanely bright, awesome. That is just so cool. Gotta love it. And yes, you can use the sequencer to set up the lights to do different sequences beyond what the controller already does. So I'm not going to do crazy. that, but people can do that if you really <laughs> want to. Okay, so I've got it um, about three quarters of the way up is where it's doing all those cool lights. Okay, you can see in monitor mode. Um, as you scroll over, you're going to get all sorts of information. There's your volts of your pack. But this is really what you want. Oh yeah, buddy. Status monitor. That is so cool. <laughs> you have each individual cell. Nice. So you basically don't need a timer because you can just have an alarm at a cell voltage level. So let's, let's do that. Let's go to audio events before we do. Let's do audio events. Telemetry warning. Smart battery. Okay, so the startup, I don't want to tone at startup voltage. Well, that's fine. Overcharge, I don't care. That's never gonna happen. Imbalance, 200 millivolts. Hmm, don't care. Well. Really, Damn. Mm, I don't know. Let's do that. So startup volts, overcharge. Isn't there a low voltage? Smart ESC, let's see what's in there. Low voltage alarm, 3.6. Nice, it's already set, guys. Cool. That's really good. And it's gonna be alarming with voice. Nice, okay? 
That is so cool. Receiver voltage, there's no alarm set right now. So it looks like this ESC might be capable of generating a little bit more than the five volts I was talking about earlier. This might be, uh, it might be like seven volts. But either way, these are, these are digital Metal Gear servos, if I believe right, if I'm saying that correctly. Don't hold me to it, but they sure sound digital. That is awesome. Okay, so now walking out of that menu, if I were to sit here and give full throttle for a few minutes, you could scroll over to this. Oh my goodness, look at all this. That is so cool. You can set up your smart ESC from this menu. It's so cool. There's your different G-forces while you're flying, you'll see, and it'll give you your min maxes. There's your settings for gyroscope. There's your different settings, and as you go in and out of safe, those will change, okay? Very cool. AS3X settings, different flight modes, okay? Now those are locked. And this, this is where I would want to fly if I was mostly concerned with my voltages. Well, that's interesting. I didn't give me a warning, so. Okay, so back to the regular screen. I'm gonna clear the timer. Everything looks good. Let's go into forward programming. If it shows up, let's see what happens. Connecting, gyro setting. Whoa. Whoa, you can play with it. That is really nice. So they unlocked some of the settings for us. Thank you, Horizon. That was a good call. All right, so without further ado, no, Expo. Oh, okay. Dual rates and Expo. Okay, so I always set these things up the same way. Now, this is discussed in the manual here. It talks about high rates and low rates being 10 and 5% for low rates, okay? And then it talks about the amount of deflection. I'm not gonna bother with that because I don't, especially not on bind and fly um, or plug and fly or any fly at all. <laughs> so ailerons, elevator, and rudder. Those are the three axis of control, the three primary axis. I'm gonna set that to switch F on the lowest setting. I'm gonna have Expo at five on the middle setting. I'm gonna have Expo at 10. And on the upper setting, I'm gonna go all the way up to 20 and I'm gonna drop the rate's down to 90, okay? So that means this will be a very soft stick with less output. This is gonna be where I intend to fly initially. This is gonna be double the touchiness if I don't have enough to get it to the ground. And this is gonna be half the touchiness with even a little bit taken off the top, okay? Now we're gonna replicate that for each of the control surfaces. And it's all tied to one switch, very simply. This has served me very well it's a very, very uh, preference-driven sort of thing. This is super subjective. Do not copy me just because you think, you know, my way is the best. This is totally your call. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, just do it different. It's not a big deal. You can follow the manual if you want. I've had good luck with this, okay? Doesn't mean you're gonna love it. You might wanna start a little bit higher if you're an inexperienced pilot. You might wanna start a little bit lower if you're a better pilot than I am. The idea is when you're done with your initial flight. Okay, so now that's all set. I wanna go into the middle. Throttle cuts on, everything is ready to rock and roll. I think what we're gonna to do tonight is we're gonna go outside because it's dark and we're gonna do some taxiing in the dark so you can see how awesome it looks. You've already seen it fly, but you may not have seen it out in the dark. So we're gonna do that next. You've got Expo, you've got Safe Select designation, you've got Safe Binding, You've got the bind plug process, uh, when to put it in, when to pull it out. When, I mean, well, once you do that, you can just repeat. Um, we've obviously got the lights set up. We have the flaps. We haven't even looked. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Did you notice what just happened? Fast acting and slow on the way back. Watch this. This has happened to me on the NX-8 flap system. See how it says two seconds? Watch this. Now it's normal, what the heck? Now it's normal, that's not okay. This needs to be set to two seconds as well. I think that's a glitch. I'm assuming they're gonna fix it because you have to set all three settings. Hmm. Now it stays at two seconds. Now look at the control surfaces. 
Takeoff flaps, landing flaps, neutral. Okay, takeoff flaps, landing flaps. See, it's working perfectly. But you have to set that for all three positions of switch B. Hmm. Be aware of that, pun intended. Okay, throttle cuts on. Guys, if you're watching this video, we've obviously gone to great lengths to make sure that you understand what's going on, how to best make use of the radio system here. This NX8 is great. The NX6 would get you a long ways toward getting this thing done, but you're gonna give up something like maybe lights, maybe uh, reversing on the motor. It's assignable at this point now, from what I understand, um, so you may be able to get away with the reversing, but maybe not the light control or maybe not the safe select designation, or you have to tie the safe select to the light condition, which might not be bad. You might be okay with that. Um, they are two separate channels though. So I'm not sure how that would work. Either way, the point is this plane looks awesome. Look at those gigantic control surfaces. I know, that's crazy. Okay. I'm, I'm noticing that there is a mix on the rudder by default. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going into safe. There is a mix. It's a pretty intense mix. There's less mix. Okay, when you're in AS3X, see the rudder? There's more in safe. Okay, so that being said, let's go ahead and go outside. And I just want you guys to know, we really appreciate you sticking around. Um, we know that this was frustrating for you because this plane is so awesome. We know that you guys wanted to see it. We did everything in our power to bring it to you as soon as we could with respect for those involved in this project. Thanks to the, the Pades for sharing this with the world. Thanks to Horizon for putting it together. This is a really cool plane. And there's, I don't know, I don't want to say there's never been a plane like this because there's been other custom planes that are really, really cool. But there's never been one quite like this with the... Um, just, just with the amount of effort that went into it, I think Mike Patey spent thousands of hours on it and it just happens to be that it's crashed. So it's just a different scenario. Um, we have plenty of awesome Warbirds. We have, we have just endless amounts of good models out there. Horizon's done a great job and there's, there's other competitive brands that are doing a good job too, but Horizon is one of the best. If you want to support us, please give us a like. Subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Click the bell for notifications and then you'll be aware of the videos. We understand you're not always gonna watch a five hour video. That's pretty ridiculous for us to assume. Um, and this, hopefully this one isn't quite five hours, but let's say it's two and a half hours when we're done. That's a long video, we get it. Some of you guys are never gonna watch a whole video that we put out, that's fine. But we're trying to help people set up a pretty complicated system and make it work right. We want you to get the full potential out of every plane you get, but we mostly don't want you to be a one and done. We don't want you to buy this plane, crash it, get pissed off and quit, okay? That's why we're saying Sport Cub S. That's why we're saying Apprentice 1.5. That's why we're saying um, uh, Carbon Cub S2, which is a 1.3 meter, much more manageable, and you can get it in ready to fly. That's why we're saying Habu. We're not saying Draco first plane because even though you probably could fly it, when you do crash, it's gonna be catastrophic, it's gonna be very expensive, and you could actually hurt yourself. This thing's a pretty capable plane. So hear us, hear our heart. We're not trying to discourage anybody. We're here to encourage you to fly, but to fly within the boundaries of keeping yourself safe, not destroying your opportunity to continue to fly. And also we wanna help you work through the ranks so that you're not really disappointed because if I crashed a plane like this, first of all, I would be having a heart attack trying to fly this thing if it was a brand new pilot. First mm -hmm. of all, it's a lot of money. And second of all, oh, it's a lot of stuff to figure out. Mm -hmm. And it's way harder than it looks in real life. Anybody who has flown has a very real appreciation for how hard or how easy it is to fly a plane. So when you watch our channel, I don't, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I might make it look easier than you think, okay? I'm not the best pilot. I'm certainly not the worst pilot, okay? There's a lot of people that are way better pilots than me, and there's a lot of people that are way worse pilots than me. I'm somewhere in the middle, okay? But I am kind of like an average pilot, I would say. So when you watch me fly this, don't just assume you can jump out and get this thing. Safe will help, but it's gonna help you get it back to the ground in one piece, maybe. You also have maybe. to turn safe on. Okay, check the link in the description. This is how you can help support us financially. Buy the, the things that we use, buy something similar, or buy whatever you want. Just follow the links. When you buy, 
the companies know about it. That builds clout for us with the different companies that we work with, and you also help to support us a little bit financially. So please do it. We really appreciate it. You guys have been very good to us in that way, and it is really helping to grow our channel. It's helping to compensate us for our time because here it is. 11:20 on a Friday night and my <laughs> camera crew, my wonderful camera crew, who is always by my side every time we do one of these ridiculous videos. So we thank you camera crew. We thank you kids for being downstairs and playing. Um, so without further ado, definitely click the like, help us out. The more you do that, we're about ready to hit hundred thousand subscribers. And when we do, we're gonna get our first plaque from YouTube, which is really cool. And then all of a sudden we'll magically be verified, whatever that means. <laughs> So we appreciate you guys having verified us many years ago before YouTube recognized us. So thank you. We wouldn't have the channel without you. We certainly wouldn't be reviewing awesome planes like this without you being part of it. And, you know, to be honest with you, if you weren't into it, we wouldn't be doing it. So come back for more. We're going to pause, go outside in the dark, give you a little bit of taxi footage in closing, and hopefully you'll love it. Definitely check the links. Come on. Okay, so we're gonna go out the door and we figured we better show this because it's gonna be kind of interesting, okay? Because this plane is big, okay? And it's also quite heavy. It's like 10 pounds, mm -hmm. okay, with a battery. Okay, careful, careful camera crew. I guess that was kind of tricky to film, but that's okay. All right, so now I have to figure out how to lay this down without damaging it. Ooh. So I'm gonna grab it by the prop. This is why you check your throttle cut and you're very careful on the mains and then gently down. Oh, that is something to behold. We have lots of lights on outside right now. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Oh, that prop looks awesome. I hope they can see what we're seeing. Okay, we're just gonna do a little taxiing here in the dark, lights off. First step, second step, third step, fourth step, fifth step, all the way up. I don't know if there's any difference between that and this. There's kind of like a middle where there's some strobes on going down. Okay, full flaps, we're gonna cut the flaps off. Man, that thing is very bright. It's a really dark night. It you is. You can't see very good. Mm -hmm. It's really cloudy. Okay, you want to like keep moving? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. okay, reverse. That is just awesome. <laughs> cool. Hold still. While running, you can reverse. Awesome. You know how tempting it is to go fly right now? No, I know. I, I know how tempting it is, but no. <laughs> I know. I know. We just absolutely can't. I'm sort of reluctant to even go in the grass because it's wet right now. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do it anyway because okay. we, we can't not. We can Full do. up elevator. Okay. Obviously, our grass is sawed here. It's very easy to manipulate around. The sod is pretty smooth. Now, we're going to go out into the rough here. This is like uh, prairie grass. So there's big gaps. Yeah, like that's a big bump. Mm -hmm. Getting around just fine. No kidding. Wow, look how smooth it is. It is really dang smooth. That is amazing. Okay, step back, four steps. Okay, perfect. You can see the his face is lit up because of the instrument cluster. That is pretty cool, being able to reverse. <laughs> oh man, that's tempting. That is so tempting. I wanna, hold on, I wanna just try one little thing. One little thing. I'm not gonna take off. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I could probably do it, but. Oh, that has some power. Okay, now off of a rough spot, Okay, let's come right onto the driveway here. There's a pretty good bump there. Oh yeah. Man, that suspension is just phenomenal. 
Now I did notice one thing that's not good on this. The winglets block your red and green nav lights really bad. Mm. Okay. So that does not help for visibility at night. I mean, I don't really plan to fly in pitch dark like this because it's just really not that fun to fly in total pitch dark. There's just your strobes. There's nothing. There's just strobes. That'd be like timber. There's your anti-crash beacon on the back. That actually would probably be better for just general flying in the dark. Okay. Now just remember that set up like that. You can see the red. Red is right returning. Very good visibility there. As you increase the setting, you get blinded by the mm -hmm. front lights. See like that? Mm -hmm. It is incredibly bright. Mm -hmm. Those front lights are awesome. Pretty incredible, right? It gets around, guys. That is just something. That's crazy. And the braking works super, yeah. super good. That is, that is awesome, guys. Intense. It's intense. It's going to definitely take some getting used to. I really, really like the way it handles on the ground. So, mm -hmm. all right, folks, throttle cuts on. One last test of the lights. You've got a little bit more ambient light from, obviously, from our front stoop here. That is one beautiful plane. That's cool. All right, guys, without further ado, we know you've already seen it fly. We haven't, so we never know what to expect. And that's really tough for us because we want to bring you some good footage and it really hurts our souls when we have a crash or something that screws up or you run into a tree like the F-15, um, you know, on Maiden. So we're hoping for the best on this. This plane is probably going to be a very good flying plane. So I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. I think we're going to be more along the lines of wanting to push the limits of what the plane can do. And then we end up screwing up. So let's just wish us all luck for that. You've already seen it if it happened. And we're just really glad that you're here to support us and hold our hands as we cry about it. <laughs> But for now, look at that beauty right now. That is one tremendous plane. You can get one for yourself. Look at the link in the description below. Get yourself an NX6 if you'd like. Get yourself the battery. We've got a Gen 2 5000 6S30C. The lady says we're done. <laughs> Come back for more.